Hey guys welcome back to the channel. This is story about what if Naruto awakens the hell Sharingan wave. Part 1. If you guys enjoy this what if. And want to see part 2. Comment down below. And let me know before I start please do support for more awesome content. And leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And also share this video with your friends. And check out the description. And check out my playlist. So let's start the video. The sound of steel rang out as Haku and Sasuke traded blows once more. Both growled as their kunai and struggled against the others respectively. Zabuza was slightly impressed to see a green behind the ears genin matching up against his tool. Sakura. Kakashi ordered his pink-haired genin, stay in front of Tizuna. Sasuke will handle the hunter nin. But it's sensei. Sakura chorized, bringing a kunai in front of her. Meanwhile, Haku blocked Sasuke's kunai with her needle. Please stand down, I don't want to have to kill you. She said calmly. Please, like someone like you could beat me. Sasuke replied. Your confidence will only result in your failure as I have an advantage over you. As you can see that all around us is water that you so thoughtfully provided earlier, and now I have one of your arms restrained from making seals. However, I am not as restrained as you are. Aku said as she made a series of seals on her unoccupied hand, making Sasuke look on an alarm. When Haku finished her seals she stomped on the ground calling out a thousand needles of death. The water on the ground leapt up into the air as if it held life before reforming into a thousand long needles of ice. The needles surrounded the Ichiha and looked ready to take him out, but the boy was doing something else. He closed his eyes and began to concentrate on his chakra. Remember the training and focus my chakra from my body to my feet. He thought as he did just that before his eyes snapped open. Haku hopped backwards as her technique flew towards Sasuke with quick precision. Haku hopped back far enough to avoid taking damage from her own technique, but once she looked up she saw the Ichiha high in the air. The burst of chakra alerted her senses as Sasuke unleashed his signature fireball technique upon the young girl which she dodged by hopping to the side and threw a couple of at Sasuke which went through him and caused him to vanish from sight. The clone? She thought before she felt a second burst of chakra behind her and caused her to hop to the side to dodge a kunai. When she got up she heard a voice behind her back. You're so slow that it's pathetic, from now on it will be you that dodge my attacks. Sasuke said before continuing the assault on the ice user. He sent a side slash with a kunai that Haku ducked under and followed it with a kick to the girl's head, which was the same result as last time. Sasuke however, continued to allow his moves to flow and follow one another, and eventually he hit his mark by kicking her in the chest, causing her to fall onto her back. Zabuza couldn't believe that his loyal subordinate was losing a battle of speed. Kakashi told him so, too. I can't have you underestimating my team, now Sasuke is the number one rookie in Konoha, Sakura is one of the brightest, and Naruto is the hyperactive knucklehead unpredictable ninja of the leaf. Zabuza started to chuckle, before he laughed and turned towards Haku, Haku, it's time for us to get serious. He said with Haku slowly rising to her feet, knowing what Zabuza last said was a silent command on her part to no longer hold back. Takra soon began to rise from her body, and soon it went above the level Sasuke was able to produce. Her bloodline began to react to the rise in chakra as water began to float in the air and surrounded her body before becoming ice shards once more and flew at the Ichiha in high speed, which he narrowly dodged. She then made a new seal, planning to use one of her unique jutsus. Sasuke stood prepared for whatever the girl was planning to use against him until he began to notice something. He began to feel the air becoming colder by the second, with Haku remaining completely still and held her hands in the strange seal. The air then began to freeze all around him, with the moisture in the air becoming solid. The ice continued to build before forming 21 solid and reflective ice mirrors. Haku then brought her arms down and simply said, crystal ice mirrors. What's with this Kakashi asked himself as he examined them, it seemed familiar to him, but he could not place it. That's not normal ice used in snow country is it? He asked the demon of the mist. Exactly Kakashi, but you'll never get to know it. Zabuza said before clashing his giant blade with Kakashi's puny kunai. From within the ice mirrors, Sasuke watched as Haku's image prepared to make a move on him and try to destroy him. Well then, are you ready? It's time for me to show you what my true speed can do. She said as she held up her needles, with Sasuke standing at full alert for the following attack. But soon as he started to move a scream of pain left his throat as he was engulfed in a torrent of metal needles. When Haku stopped, she saw that Sasuke was now riddled with needles and covered in bloody cuts on his face, arms, and legs. Sasuke coughed up blood before glaring at Haku. But before a word could be said Haku prepared to attack again. Kakashi saw that last attack by Haku and tried to assist his student, but Zabuza was continuing his assault on the Jounin as he sent a horizontal slash at Kakashi, making the silver-haired man jump back. Panting he tried to think of a way to defeat him. 
Sakura on the other hand was extremely worried about Sasuke, as she was becoming increasingly distressed at seeing her teammate getting beaten horribly and felt the need to do something and quickly or else Sasuke would die. It soon became too much to handle when Sasuke was engulfed in a torrent of needles and immediately it caused her to turn to the old man beside her. I'm sorry Tazuna-san, but I must leave your side for a moment. She said with Tazuna looking at the pink-haired girl for a moment before he nodded. I understand, do what you have to do Sakura. He said with the girl nodding before moving towards the ice mirrors before her before jumping into the air with a kunai in hand. She screamed loudly from all the practice in her years of being a fangirl throwing the kunai at the cage, inwardly praying that it would somehow in some way assist Sasuke in his fight. However her efforts would prove futile as Haku caught the flying projectile with ease and held the weapon in her outstretched arm. She then looked towards Sakura with a disappointed expression being shown from her body movement. If you kept quiet you could have attacked me or assisted your friend. She said before she felt something was coming in her direction. Her senses proved itself to be correct as Haku was struck across her face mask with a shuriken catching the girl completely off guard. The force of the hit was enough to knock her out from her mirror and caused her to hit the ground with a face plant. As she got up a brand new voice spoke all over the bridge that caused both battles to stop dead in their tracks. The blast of smoke and Naruto stood before them, his hands raised like Zabuza's as if performing the hit and miss technique. There's no need to fear. He said grinning, Naruto Uzumaki is here. Loud little brat. Zabuza muttered before reaching into his shuriken pouch and chucked them at the blonde. Bringing out his kunai knife Nardo prepared to block them when they were deflected and fell harmlessly to the ground. Looking at the deadly weapons he saw they were needles. Haku, what is the meaning of this? Zabuza demanded his accomplice. Zabuza I want to fight them my way. Haku answered, her voice muffled by the mask, making her sound like a guy. Raising a non-existing eyebrow at the statement, the demon of the mist sighed. You're as soft as always. Looking down at himself Suit cursed knowing it was true. The wounds hurt, that was a given, but they were far from fatal. And what was worse is that he didn't know how to defeat this dot, he just couldn't see the reason for it. But Naruto was here now, and while the blonde was an absolute idiot, he knew that he would get serious and distract the false hunter ninja. Hey. I came to save you. And just like that Sasuke knew he was screwed. You idiot. What on earth possessed you to come inside the mirrors? Sasuke yelled at his teammate. What did you say? I came to save you and this is what I get you ungrateful bastard. Naruto yelled back. Taking advantage of their bickering, Haku merged into the nearest ice mirror. And then started to barrage them with a volley of needles. Trying to follow with your eyes is impossible. You will never be able to catch me. Haku said, readying herself to attack again. That's a load of shit. Naruto shouted out standing straight up after the attack. He brought his index and middle fingers together and shouted, Shadow Clone Jutsu. In a giant cloud of smoke 20 Naruto's appeared. Letting out a battle cry the real Naruto and his small clone army charged at the 21 ice mirrors, intending on shattering them. It was a massacre for Naruto, his clones were absolutely decimated. And the original fell right on his ass with a couple more needles embedded in his torso. This uses the mirror's reflection to transport me. From my point of view, you seem to be moving in slow motion. Haku said with the two looking stunned seeing this guy's pure speed. Bakashi's head snapped upon hearing that last statement made by the ice user and turned his attention towards Ibuza, a surprised expression on his face. I knew it for a kid to master like that. Kakashi said when Zabuza started chuckling. Like that? Sakura asked, confused at what Kakashi was implying. The bloodline. Kakashi said bluntly, a deep blood lineage and superior genealogy. It's a pass down by your ancestors he continued on, drawing a baffled look from her. So wait that means. Yea, you can compare it to my Sharingan. Those two are in deep trouble. In the dome Naruto heard Kakashi's explanation and smirked hearing it, so what? Big deal you have a bloodline that won't stop me from fulfilling my dreams. He exclaimed, his voice never wavering. His exclamation caused Haku's eyes to soften behind her mask as the memory of the day she was found by Zabuza plagued her mind. The day that Zabuza found her after she was on the streets cold, hungry, and soulless, just waiting to die. But then Zabuza found her and gave her a reason to live. She became his tool and father figure and for that gave her the will to live again. Becoming a true shinobi was difficult for me and it still is today. If possible, I don't want to have to kill you. Nor want you to have to kill me. Haku said, her voice shaking a little behind the mask, but if you come at me I will destroy my kind heart and become a true shinobi. This bridge is a place where we fight to connect our dreams. Me, for my dream. And you for your dreams. Tears fell from her eyes and collected at the bottom of her mask. Please don't hate me. I want to protect someone precious to me. To work for that person. To fight for that person. To make that person's dreams come true. 
that is my dream. Her voice then filled with determination, for that, I can become a true shinobi. For that I can kill you. Sasuke-kun. Naruto. Don't listen to him, you can beat him. Sakura shouted at them, hoping beyond hope that they would prevail. No Sakura. Don't egg them on. Kakashi said stopping her from saying more, drawing another confused look from the stupid fangirl. Even if they somehow defeat that, they cannot beat that boy. What do you mean? She asked, making the demon of the mist laugh at her naivety. They don't have the strength to destroy their hearts and kill another person. That young man knows the true pain of being a shinobi. Zabuza said, keeping up the charade of Haku being a guy. A real shinobi can't be created in a peaceful village like yours. Because you can't gain the most important thing. The experience of killing. And from what I've seen only one of you wet behind the ears, Jenin is capable of such a feat. He continued on infuriating the copycat ninja at such a claim. I'm going to end this instantly. The copycat ninja said, bringing his left hand to his aid. Sharingan again. Is that the only thing you can do? Zabuza sneered, getting really tired of this trick. As Kashi started lifting this eight, the eyebrowless man reached under his shirt and pulled out a kunai. Quickly adding chakra to his feet the demon of the mist launched himself at him. Aiming to take out Kakashi's Sharingan eye. It was too late to dodge, so Kakashi quickly brought up his right hand to defend. The kunai embedded itself in his hand, causing a massive amount of blood to splatter onto the ground. With his normal eye Kakashi glared at the demon of the mist. You ask if it's all I can do, but you are afraid of my Sharingan's abusa. Kakashi taunted, blocking the pain from experience he received in the Third Great Shinobi War. A shinobi's supreme technique is not something that should be shown to your opponent over and over again. Zabuza snarled at him. You should feel honored, you're the only person to have seen it twice. There will not be a third time. Kakashi replied. Heh, even if you defeat me you can't win against Haku. Ever since he was a kid I taught him all different kinds of fighting skills. Even facing the greatest adversity, he succeeded. Without heart nor fear of death, a fighting machine known as a shinobi. And even he surpasses mine by his terrifying bloodline. I gained a high quality tool for myself. Unlike the scrap that follows you around. He said, pulling the kunai from Kakashi's palm. There's nothing as boring as a man's bragging. Let's get this started. Kakashi replied, lifting his eight, his sharingan flashing. Zabuza jumped backwards to avoid any possible attacks. Backing further way down the bridge. Hold on for a second. I'll use your own words and brag about one more thing. The last time you said this to me. I'll tell you this. The same will not work twice against me, won't it? I have already seen through the trivial system of your eye. In the previous fight, I wasn't just getting beat like an idiot. I had Haku hide in the background and examine every aspect of the battle. My tool told me how to beat your Sharingan after only seeing it once. Ninja art. Hidden Miss Jutsu. He called out. Zabuza gradually disappeared as a thick impenetrable mist blanketed the area, leaving Kakashi waiting for the next move. This fog is so thick I doubt even Zabuza could see through this. Kakashi muttered under his breath. But when he saw some familiar shapes speeding through the mist, he deflected several with his kunai. Impressive that you could block those Sharingan Kakashi. Came a voice from behind Kakashi. Spinning around, Kakashi saw Zabuza standing with one hand in the controlling hand sign for the dot, but what really amazed him was the fact that Zabuza's eyes were closed. But the next time either of you see me will be the end of everything. You have overrated your Sharingan a little too much. What? Kakashi demanded, hoping that Zabuza didn't figure it out. Oh how wrong he was. You acted as if you knew everything, but you can't read my mind nor see my future Kakashi. The Sharingan is simply a trick that makes your opponent think you can. It's basically an eye technique involving hypnotism and an attention to detail. Using these two abilities together you can progress from copying the body to copying the mind to copying the dot this is the dance that makes it look like you can predict the future. First with that keen eye you copy my movements and shake my mind. Then when I'm confused you are able to figure out what I'll say and then become me. Then once the worry and confusion is at its peak, you attack with a clever trick, you attack my mind with a hypnotic suggesting what seal I should perform next, and then you copy that. Zabuza laughed. So the answer is simple. First with this thick mist I render your eyes useless. The demon of the mist proceeded to punch Kakashi in the chest, sending him backwards, he, and by keeping my eyes closed, I removed the chance of being hypnotized. Kakashi regained his breath after that punch, but why? You can't see anything either. Have you forgotten? That I am a genius in the art of silent killing, taking down my enemy by just their sound. At those words, Kakashi turned his head on instinct in the direction he knew Sakura and Tazuna to be. Oh no. He thought, his body disappearing as he quickly moved to the pair, appearing between the men's abusa just in time to barely block an attack. From the mist, Sakura's screams could be heard. 
Meanwhile during Kakashi's fight Naruto was barely holding on to consciousness while Sasuke was busy defending himself from barrages of needles. He focused chakra into his eyes to see better and ducked out of the way from another barrage of needles. Unbelievable, but how was he able to see it? Haku thought before she got her answer when Sasuke raised his head to look at her. Within his eyes were no longer the regular onyx black of the Ichiha clan, but were now the famed crimson red eyes with two tomo in the left eye and one in the right. Haku now knew that Sasuke was now using the Sharingan that was now active. Haku then knew she couldn't afford to waste any more time. She quickly exited her mirror and went towards a prone Naruto. Cursing Sasuke pumped the last of his chakra into his legs, hoping to make it there in time. Bakashi clutched at his chest, trying to stem the flow of blood from the new slash going diagonally down his chest. He had managed to come between Zabuza and Sakura and Tazuna in time, but only with seconds to save their lives as a human shield. You were too slow Kakashi. Zabuza growled at him, ashamed his skills dulled over the years, it was truly pathetic in his opinion. Did your desire to save that cannon fodder cloud your mind and make the most even thicker? Even with that impressive eye, your ability to read my movements is dimming. Dry and handed in there dot I want to savor the fun as I return the favor from my defeat earlier. Don't worry about the genin behind us. He grinned under his bandages, Haku has probably already killed them. Plus I am about to send you to the same place as them, I think you can apologize to them in the next life, apologize for lacking the strength to protect them. He then went into a mocking laughter. It was Sakura who finally perked up, yelling, Sasuke Kun won't be beaten that easily. Completely forgetting about Naruto. Bakashi smiled from beneath his face mask, exactly. I believe in their strength and Naruto's determination. He said not hearing her entire screeching. And Sasuke is the offspring of Konoha's most outstanding clans. You mean? Zabuza asked, knowing exactly what Kakashi was saying. Yes, that boy's full name is Sasuke Ichiha. A genius with the blood of the Ichiha clan running through his veins. Kakashi finished his thoughts. An offspring of that tragic clan. But that's the same with Haku. No one has ever defeated that special dot he said disappearing into the mist again. Sakura, stay here. Kakashi ordered his genin, causing her to stand still. Can you hear me Zabuza? You seem to believe that I survived in this world with only my Sharingan. You seem to forget I am a former member of the Anbu, and you know what that means. And you know what kind of shinobi I truly am, I can do more than just copy dot I shall show you my own original he said, cupping his hand beneath a specific pouch on his jacket. In the ice mirrors Naruto stirred and saw the hunter ninja on the ground. Geez all you do is get in the way. Sasuke said above him. Smiling seeing that Sasuke beat him, Naruto looked up to congratulate him. But his smile faded and his face turned into a mixture of horror and absolute shock. Because Sasuke was covered in needles, his arms, legs, torso, and especially his neck were riddled with going through him. Wah? Why did you save me? Naruto asked, shocked by the fact that Sasuke did this. Sasuke, smirking slightly as blood leaked from his mouth. I hated you. Then why? I never asked for your help. I don't know, my body just moved on its own. He coughed up a large amount of blood and collapsed, and Naruto caught him before Naruto caught him when he almost hit the ground. That man. Sasuke gasped out as his eyes began to close. That man I swore to kill my brother. I told myself that I wouldn't die until I killed him. He winced as he looked at Naruto. Don't die either. And then his eyes closed and his body became cold. He landed a blow on me without even flinching and died protecting you. To protect a precious person, knowing it was a trap, he still jumped in. He is a shinobi that deserves respect. Haku said her voice was void of emotion as she stood up. Is this your first death of a friend? That is the way of the shinobi. She said sadly stepping into the nearest ice mirror. Shut up. Naruto shouted at the fake hunter ninja, I won't forgive you. Still hunched over Sasuke's body, foul demonic red chakra emitted from his body and looked up to face her. His eyes were slitted blood red, full of malice and rage. I'm going to kill you. He roared out, his voice dark and demonic promising death. Aku watched in fascination and horror as the red chakra surrounded his body. His face became more pronounced as his whisker-like marks became darker in color, with his canines turning to small fangs. When he opened his eyes. The evil feeling of the chakra overwhelmed her as she felt her hand shaking in fear and almost the need to run from him and never come back. Aku felt a multitude of fears going all throughout her body as she saw the chakra veil take on the shape of a fox. She felt even further frightened, seeing as how chakra is supposed to be invisible to the naked eye, and for an instant, she could swear that it was an image of a glaring fox. What is this chakra? She asked herself as his wounds healed and the needles from he previous attacks popped out of his body, that's impossible for chakra to change like this. It feels so evil and full of malice. And his wounds are healing, who is this boy? She questioned inside her head while preparing for Naruto's attack. 
Kakashi and Zabuza all blinked as they felt the sudden burst of evil chakra. Kakashi looked into the mist desperately as he withdrew a scroll from one of the pouches on his flak jacket, is that Zabuza? No. This terrible chakra can't be Naruto. Knowing he didn't have much time left, Kakashi flipped his scroll into the air with his right hand and moved his left hand up to his chest wound. He stuck his finger in the wound and in a single practiced motion caught the scroll, opened it, and swiped his bloody finger down the length of the inscriptions. Spinning the open paper around his body in preparation for that Kakashi called out to the demon of the mist, Zabuza. I know you can hear me, and you know neither of us have time. To waste. This might not be your style, but let's end this fight right here and now. He said, catching the scroll as if rolled itself up in a focusing seal. HMPH, sounds interesting. What could you possibly do in this situation? Show me Kakashi. Zabuza shouted from within the thick mist. In the ice mirror dome Haku moved quickly and threw six needles towards Naruto. Naruto simply let out a demonic roar that blew them away. He then proceeded to jump up to attack her, she fled the mirror from years of training, and just in time as he punched where she just was a second ago, destroying the mirror. She fell to the ground completely shocked that her mirror was destroyed, but she didn't have time to think about it when she rolled away as he came down on her. His punch destroyed the ground which she stood on, resulting in her tumbling towards him after trying to get towards another mirror. She tried to get away, but he grabbed her arm nearly causing it to break. Naruto then brought his right arm back and with all the strength he could muster, he punched Haku's masked face, forcing her to fly backwards through one of her mirrors. And roll on the ground before hitting an iron rail guard. As she crumbled Naruto roared out and ran on all fours like an animal. As he neared her, her mask started crumbling revealing parts of her face. He brought his right arm back to finish her off and thrust it forward. As his punch was about to reach her face her mask fell off. Everything around them stopped, the wind didn't blow, the birds didn't chirp, nothing. Haku sat there on her knees. Why didn't you finish me off? She asked, her voice cold and dead. What are you trying to say? Naruto asked, his eyes back to their blue color. Haku was silent, but then she stood, her head bowed. You don't understand now you have taken away my reason for living. Zabuza has no need for weak shinobi or a defective tool. You're not a tool. Naruto snapped at her, what makes him so special anyway? Haku bowed her head and told Naruto of her history. She explained how in water country, those with bloodlines were seen as monsters and tools, and civil wars in water country had resulted in the deaths of nearly all the bloodline users in said country. My mother was one of them. She said, her eyes lifeless. And when my father found out, he killed her and then tried to kill me. But I killed him. Then Zabuza found you. Naruto finished for her, his gaze saddened. Knowing her life was somewhat like his unwanted and alone. Yes. Haku smiled, tears running down her eyes. I was happy, he took me as his own and trained me to be his perfect tool. He was like a second father to me, but now. She trailed off, looking to the side. He has no need for a defective tool, so please Naruto. Kill me. Over with Zabuza and Kakashi, the copycat ninja went through four hand seals before slamming his scroll onto the ground. Summoning. Earth style. Fang pursued. He thought out as rolls of kanji symbols stretched out and the ground crackled with immense power. It's useless Kakashi you can't figure out where I am. Without your Sharingan you're useless. The next attack will be the loss of Yuza's thoughts were interrupted feeling some rumbling beneath his feet. Opening his eyes, he could hear what he thought was the sound of dogs barking, which was joined quickly by cracking noises. Looking at his feet, Zabuza was shocked to see when some dogs burst from the bridge, grabbing him and holding him tight in place. As the mist cleared Kakashi saw Zabuza being held by a bunch of dogs. A huge bulldog bit into both of his right shoulder rendering it useless, two great dames held his hands, two Labrador retrievers held his arms, two Rottweilers bit into his thighs, two bit into his ankles. And a pug bit on the long cloth of his eight. All wearing blue capes with smiley faces on them and leaf ate on various parts of their bodies. How? Zabuza asked despite the pain. Earlier in the fight I let you wound me and your weapons stink with my blood so my hounds couldn't miss you. Kakashi said as the fog lifted. The fog is lifting. I can see your future and your future is death. You say my future is death. I've had enough of your bluffs. Zabuza raged. Zabuza you've had your fun. You schemed your schemes, the day you deserted the village hidden in the mist and became a missing nin, your name and your reactions were reported to every village. We all know your failed coup dead at you and your followers staged and the attempt to assassinate the Mizukage. Since then you've been trying to raise funds for a second attempt and barely staying ahead of the hunter nins, which is what brought you here. That's why you'd stoop to work for scum like Gato. Kakashi said. Kakashi then did three hand seals and used his left hand to brace his right wrist. 
a ring of crackling chakra appeared around him, and small bolts of electricity flowed from the ring into his hand. The bolts eventually stopped, and he now held a large blue ball of lightning, which let out a terrible sound like the screeching of a thousand angry birds. You're a loose cannon. The man you're trying to kill, Tazuna, is the heart and spirit of this place. And the bridge you're trying to prevent him from completing is the land's hope. You're willing to sacrifice this place and everyone in this village just to advance your own ambitions, he continued. Spare me the civics lesson and philosophy, you have no right in my affairs. Do your worst. Zabuza roared. And I. Lightning blade. Kakashi yelled as he ran at Zabuza, his right hand at his side tearing through the bridge, he then brought his hand up to plunge it into his chest. But he saw a dark shape appear before him. Too late to pull back, he surged forward, thrusting his lightning engulfed hand at Zabuza. Despite the tears Naruto knew how Haku felt, he didn't want to do it, but sometimes there was no choice. Reaching into his kunai holster, he brought out his kunai knife and ran at her, intending at making her death swift and painless. Thank you Naruto, live on and fulfill your dreams. I just wish we met under different circumstances. I know we would have been friends maybe even. Her thoughts were cut short when she sensed a massive chakra spike where Zabuza was. Just when Naruto was going to take a stab at her heart, she grabbed his wrist, preventing him from the killing blow. I'm sorry Naruto-kun, but I can't die yet. She said not realizing she added a suffix to his name, she then proceeded to do a one-handed seal and disappeared. What the? Naruto asked himself seeing her disappear, looking in the direction he knew Kakashi and Zabuza were fighting, he saw her appear in front of Zabuza. Her arms wide open protecting him from Kakashi's lightning-covered hand. He felt his eyes widen, and he growled angrily. It wasn't fair no one deserved to die like that, that was when he felt something in his legs, apparently he unconsciously focused the fox's chakra into his legs. But he didn't care, squatting down he flew forward towards them. In a splash of blood, Kakashi saw with horror what he actually hit. Haku had reached Zabuza in time, but Naruto had shoved her out of the way and took Kakashi prize through his chest and out his back, the area with his blood. Wah. Wah. Kakashi tried to get out the words, but Naruto grinned, despite the pain he was in. I couldn't let her die. He said, as Kakashi pulled his trembling, blood-soaked arm free from his student. Zabuza only scoffed, amazed by Naruto's tenacity. Saved by my enemy's student all for a defective tool. Naruto, growling pale by the second, looked at the demon of the mist. His eyes are hard and cold, don't you call her that? He said, trying to cover up the hole in his chest. How? Haku put her hands over her mouth, trying no to throw up. I don't know, I just guessed. Naruto smiled at her, before puking up a glob of blood. Now listen here no brow, coughs, she loves you like a father. He managed to yell out, going into a coughing fit that got worse with each cough. But he managed to smile through the pain, I'm dying I know that much, cough, and while I may be an idiot, I know one thing about the Seven Swordsmen last rites. Zabuza winced hearing that it was a tradition in the Seven Swordsmen of the Mist to honor one request from the dying. That was if they earned their respect and if it was reasonable. While he didn't want to admit it, the blonde brat earned his respect from their first meeting, being the only one who actually didn't fear him like the others. Pine what is your wish? He asked, knowing it would abandon his mission. Cough, I want you to abandon this mission and bring Haku and yourself to Konoha to, cough, become shinobi of the leaf. He managed to say, his voice growing weaker and weaker by the second. That was a shocker, the Dean of the Mist becoming a leaf shinobi. Kakashi thought it was an insane idea, but it would take a lot of strings to pull with the Hokage. And Zabuza was wondering if the blood loss was getting to his head. But sighing he agreed. Last request accepted. On my sword Zabuza said sealing the deal, looking at the dying blonde. Thank you. Zabuza. Naruto sighed out before he closed forever. The scene was heartbreaking, only four people cried for the blonde. Kakashi cried for his student that he killed with his own hands, Zabuza actually cried for the first time since he defected from the mist, leaving behind someone very important to him. Haku cried looking at this boy. Know this man who gave his life for her. And even Tazuna cried for the deceased blonde who gave H life to save a country that wasn't his own. The only people who didn't cry was Sakura, because she was tending to a wounded Sasuke, and because parents told her that Naruto was nothing but a demon. And gave her a mission to abuse him for her years in the academy and kill him whenever she got the chance. And Sasuke, because he was unconscious at the time. However the heartbreaking scene was ruined. Well, well, well what do we have here? Came a familiar voice. It was Gato, and he had brought just about all of his henchmen. Looks like you're getting your ass kicked by Zabuza. Gato, Zabuza growled, in no mood for this. What do you want? And what's with those men? Sakura, who had brought an unconscious filled Sasuke over. What's going on? She asked. Haku grimaced. It's our employer. She said wearily, tired from using her chakra. Haha. 
Gato chuckled. The plans changed. At first I wasn't going to pay you and let the hunter nin from Water Country know where you were. Zabuza grimaced. He knew this wasn't going to end well. But then I saw this fight and thought that it'd be better to kill off you guys and give the girls to my men as part of a job well done. Sakura gasped in horror, Haku lifted herself to her feet and glared at the short man who dared to betray them as the rowdy group of men behind Gato leered at the girls. Well the men were looking at them with absolute hatred. That who saw her and grinned evilly. Actually, as punishment for breaking my arm, my men can have you as their little toy and I'll keep the pink-haired one after all, it's not every day that you find a girl with natural pink hair. I found it. Exotic. You will do no such thing to my daughter. Zabuza yelled out, slowly reaching behind his back with his good arm. Heh, well when they're done she'll be calling us daddy. One bandit cheered while the rest laughed with him. At them all. Gato called out raising his good arm to point like the stereotypical bad guy. The thugs cheered loudly and began to run forward, but a kunai sinking into Gato's skull stopped them in their tracks. Nice shot. Kakashi commented on the demon of the mist. I've been wanting to do that for a long time. Zabuza smirked, I owe it to the kid at least. You killed our meal ticket. One bandit shouted at the ninjas. Now we're going to ransack the village. Another shouted out. However when they were about to charge and ransack the village an arrow embedded in front of them. Everyone looked to where it came from and every able-bodied villager was there. While they were only carrying farming tools their numbers far outmatched theirs, making them a little intimidated. Kakashi, how much chakra do you have left? Zabuza asked the copycat ninja. Enough for one last dot Kakashi replied to the demon of the mist. Nodding Zabuza started going through 44 hand seals with Kakashi following until they ended on the rooster hand seal, water style. Water dragon jutsu. The two called out in a union as two giant dragons made out of water flew up from under the bridge, slamming into the bandits, either sending them over the side of the bridge to their deaths, crushing them on impact, or drowning them, either way none survived. But the cost was heavy, our young hero was dead, and nothing was going to bring him back. Or so everyone thought. What am I going to tell the Hokage? Kakashi sighed sadly. It's been three days since Naruto sacrificed himself to save Zabuza and Haku. He knew he couldn't procrastinate on an issue like this, after all it's not every day you kill your sensei's son. Just tell him the truth that he died protecting his precious person. Sasuke in a rare moment of kindness. But underneath his calm facade he was trying his best to cry in front of everyone. Well he would never say it out loud Naruto was his friend, the blonde always stuck by him during their academy days after his clan was slaughtered. Being an orphan he knew his pain and loneliness of not having a family. Sakura on the other hand clearly didn't give a flying fuck. Her mom always told her that Naruto was the Kaiubi incarnate and she believed every word like a good girl. And the result was her undertaking a private mission under the civilian council to destroy the blonde haired demon any way necessary. Smirking inwardly, she took pride in what she did to make him suffer, distracting him from his studies as a shinobi with her beauty, causing him brain damage by hitting him repeatedly for doing the simplest things. While she was glad she had him wrapped around her finger, his death took a lot off her mind, so she can finally report back to her mom and finally get her beloved Sasuke to finally notice her. Zabuza meanwhile stood up causing Kakashi to glance at him, sighing the demon of the mist said to the copycat ninja, listen, I'm just heading to the bathroom. I swore on my sword that I would honor the kid's request and I'm not going to break it. As he headed to the bathroom the former Mist Anbu member reflected on the last three days. And he missed the kid, well he was an idiot he had potential to surpass him, that's right he was the one he mentioned to Kakashi on the bridge. The kid had spirit and brought Haku and him closer together, he felt like smacking himself for being so oblivious to him. I mean his surrogate daughter's feelings towards him. As he opened the door he swore that if he broke his promise that he would take his own life. Haku however was sitting by the tsunami, both still shedding tears. Tsunamis were for the man who saved her and her son's lives, while hers were from what could have been. When she first saw him unconscious in the forest it pained her to try and kill him, and for that she was glad that she didn't. His eyes looked much like hers before she found Zabuza. While she had no doubt that he was happy with his current precious people, his eyes showed her it just wasn't enough. Drying her tears once again she made a silent bow to honor his sacrifice by living her life to the fullest. Azuna drank himself into unconsciousness, unable to bear that a young soul sacrificed his life for a country that was not his own. A part of him died on that bridge three days ago, showing what a waste of life these shinobi go through. Naruto was only 12, almost 13, barely old enough to see life to its fullest, that was why he was going to name it, the Great Naruto Bridge, to honor the life of Wave Country's savior before he passed out. Inari however was taking it the hardest, Naruto was the closest thing he had to a brother. But he dared not shed a tear out of sadness, no that would be an insult to the man who saved his country. 
The only time he would ever cry was out of happiness, never sadness, that he swore on the grave of Kaiza, the first hero of Wave Country, and his father. None of them knew what would occur in the next hour. Unknown location. Is this hell or is this heaven? Naruto whispered quietly to himself. The sound echoed through the darkness, and he heard his own question repeated many times, distorted in some way. He could feel the vibrations of his own voice rippling through his body. Then there was another voice, and as it spoke the veil of shadow that had shrouded his senses was banished. No, this isn't hell. It is the place in between earth, heaven, and hell. It is the connection linking all three. It is the place of judgment or known as limbo. The words came from every direction, and the voice was unlike any he had ever heard. As his sight returned he could see a figure in front of him. It was monstrous, larger than even the Kaiubi though it shared many of the same characteristics as a human. Only he had purple skin with horns on his head, and his long white hair flowed down to the giant's knees, and a dagger was held between its teeth. The man was wearing a big baggy black yukata. He was also slightly transparent and glowed with a strange dark power. The presence hung, not like a killing intent, but rather like death itself was radiating from the ghost-like man. It was so powerful that it made Kaiubi's killing intent seem like nothing. Naruto gulped, he had never felt this much power before. This man had to be a god or demon, nothing else could house so much power. I am Shinigami, god of death. Naruto's eyes widened at this revelation. He was dead. He killed me, my sensei killed me. Naruto's eyes filled with sadness. He knew that something was off, but didn't know what. But what the god of death said practically was a chakra reinforced punch by Sakura. He looked back at the Shinigami. God's orb-like eyes were boring a hole in his forehead. What? The god of death seemed a bit taken aback that a mortal would speak so bluntly with him. Well looks you've got a set of kahunas to speak to the divine. I know you're the lord of the afterlife, big fucking deal. Just send me to heaven, hell, or keep me her, either way I don't give a shit. Naruto said, crossing his arms in front of his chest, awaiting his judgment. He expected an angry scream and got banished to hell for all eternity. But instead the god of death started chuckling right before going into full-blown laughter. He waited for him to stop, but it continued on for three straight hours, bringing a bunch of tick marks to his head. What's so damn funny? He finally screamed out, getting tired of his laughter. Wiping a tear from his eye, the Shinigami chuckled one more time. You are a very amusing human. He managed to say, before letting loose a stream of chuckles. What do you mean by that? The blonde asked, while it was easy to confuse him, this was far by the most confusing thing that he ever experienced in his life. Hid, you are the first human to tell me off. No one, and I mean no one other than my brother has told me off. And I find that hilarious. Shinigami said his respect went up a notch, but now on to important matters. I believe you know that you have passed on. Yes I kind of figured that out since I met you. Naruto said, scratching his head. Cut the lips smartest. I'm trying to say something important here. Shinigami snapped at him, now as I was saying I'm here to make a deal with you. Wow, 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 hold up I ain't making any deal. Not without knowing what I'm in for. Wow you're not as dumb as you look. I take offense to that. Naruto protested. Whatever blondie, let me guess, you aren't going to agree unless I tell you what I'm planning. Shinigami asked him, raising an eyebrow. In the words of the Yandame Hokage, take it or leave it. Naruto said, bringing out a ghostly image that made the god of death blink to make sure he wasn't seeing things. You don't know half of the words you just said. Shinigami thought, remembering those words from so long ago. All right but listen closely I'm only going to say this once. He said, making Naruto nod, I have been watching you closely and I must say you have earned my full respect and more. And that is nearly impossible. So I'm going to offer you a second chance at life. I will send you back to your world. I will repair and enhance your old body to the point that you will be unrecognizable to everyone. He finished, making Naruto's eyes widen in excitement. What about the fox? Our blonde hero asked, wondering if he would be rid of him once and for all. Unfortunately Kaiubi's soul will remain in your body. Now before you complain I just can't take him out, it is the will of my mother destiny that you two stay bound together. Seeing the blonde frown and bringing his head down in disappointment. Shinigami shrank down to the size of a six-foot-tall human and ruffled his hair in a fatherly fashion. Hey don't look so down. There's a gift that I'm going to bestow you as my vassal, a power that makes even the mightiest demon quiver in fear. Naruto looked at the god with only slight comprehension. What's this power you speak of? He asked, wondering what a vassal was. It is the power of the darkness flame. Shinigami replied. The darkness flame? Yes, the most powerful fire next to Amaratsu's flames. Powerful hellfire flames that will burn through anything, and I mean anything. The blonde couldn't help but smirk, but one thing came to his mind. What's a vassal? It means you serve me. You will be my subordinate, the first actually. 
You will follow my orders like your Hokage and Sensei, but what I say goes. Shinigami said, causing the blonde O frown, don't worry it's not like you're my slave for eternity, you will still have all your freedoms, but when an order comes up I expect you to do it. Breathing out a sigh of relief the blonde relaxed. After thinking it over for a few minutes he answered one of the highest powers in existence. I accept your deal Lord Shinigami. I'm glad to hear it, but please no honorifics. You're supposed to be yourself, not some religious nut like those blasted jashinist freaks. Shinigami sighed, really hating those guys. Jashinist. Wait never mind I'll ask later, but I have a question for you, if you'll allow it. Go ahead and ask, I just may answer it. Since you are the god of death you probably know who my parents were. So can you please tell me who they are? Naruto asked a question that has been bugging him for the past 12 years. I'm afraid you will have to ask your Hokage. But I can say that mother was in a chair. What? My mom was at chair. So I'm related to Sasuke team. Why does God hate me? Naruto cried out in disbelief, doing a bunch of exaggerated movements, causing the god of death to sweat drop, wondering if this was a good idea. Did my brother doesn't hate you, I know this for a fact trust me. He replied, making him stop at an awkward angle. Alright, fine, can I go back now? After all, I can't ask the old man if I'm dead. Naruto asked, standing straight up. Hold up before you leave, I have a couple assignments for you. Fine, lay it on me. Naruto sighed, wanting to get this over with. First I'm going to awaken your Sharingan and I want you to name it because it's going to be a new bloodline, two get rid of that godforsaken jumpsuit, I'll supply you some clothes later, three you're going to sign the fox contract Kai Ubi, and I know he will give you it. Four I want you to kill a man named Orochimaru and Madaracha, they have been a pain in my ass for far too long, and five don't frown over that pink haired bitch, instead pursue that Hayuga girl, and that ice babe. Shinigami I wait, why do you care about my love life? Neruo asked suspiciously. Shinigami actually chuckled nervously and scratched the back of his head. Well for one I know that you've been secretly seeing that Hayuga girl, and I know that you know that her love runs deep within her for a knucklehead like you. Plus that girl with that ice bloodline well. She's well hot and is developing feelings for you. And before you ask how I know, it's simple Cupid is a good friend of mine and he knows that he gets bored in limbo. So he shoots people for everyone's amusement. Though he seriously fucked up when he shot you for the pink haired bitch. Take that back Sora is not. Quite. The god of death roared at him, she is a total bitch, the worst girl I have ever witnessed to date. You may be a god, but I know her, and she he was interrupted again when the powerful deity punched him in the face. The blonde flew back a few feet before hitting an invisible wall, knocking him unconscious. He stirred a couple minutes later, but he was frowning, and his eyes held a dark look. Is this true? He asked sadly. Yes, she isn't what you thought she was. Her and that damn civilian council of yours have been fucking you over your entire life. That was the sole reason I punched you, to transfer a small part of my memory to show you I wasn't lying. After a long while our blonde hero stayed quiet, is there anything else you wish for me? He finally asked, his voice still sad, but happy at the same time in a weird way. Yes I want you to drop your mask because I'm sick and tired of you making yourself look like an ass, all the time. Shinigami retorted in a mocking tone. Nodding Naruto accepted Shinigami's terms. I'll do as you say, but I have a few questions. He asked. Ask away. For me killing those two men, isn't Orochimaru the snake Sanin who betrayed Konoha? And who the hell is Madara Chiha isn't he part of my family? Listen Orochimaru is trying to obtain immortality which is a pain in my ass, just think if other people were to discover how he gained immortality, the entire balance of life will get fucked up. Plus they've been doing sick and unusual experiments, thus forcing me to send good spirits to hell because they turned evil because of him. As for Madara, yes he's part of your family, however he has gained immortality, but that's not the worst part he somehow took control of Kaiubi not once but twice. He was the one who fucked up your life and pretty much cursed you to damnation. You have to be fucking kidding me. Did I'm a god and gods don't lie. Then there was silence, a very uncomfortable silence, so Shinigami decided to break it. Why does this bother you? I know you took your first life before. Well they seem strong, I mean I'm only at high gen and level at best. Do I have to? Oh god no, they are your primary targets. Well I want them dead as soon as possible, they don't have to be killed right away. After all, what use would you be if you died on me? Shinigami said coolly, while it was kind of cold to him, Naruto knew that he was right. But they won't be the only ones, you will have secondary targets when I come up with them. Alright, now for naming my bloodline can you give me some time to name it? I can't really come up with something this important on the fly. Naruto said hoping that he could go back now. Alright I'll give you some time. Now it's time for me to send you back, remember death is your ally. Go forth and be my agent of death to those unworthy of their lives. 
Shinigami told Naruto as he faded away and the blackness receded. After Shinigami sealed the deal with Kaiubi, he turned to Naruto. Naruto just for you to know I have to combine the Jagan Eye with your Sharingan to provide you with the power of the darkness flame, but know this you have a 50% chance of dying plus with Kaiubi's chakra, this increases your chances to 90%. Plus it will hurt like a bitch now are you sure you want to go through with this? Shinigami asked. I'm ready for it, nothing will stop me. Naruto replied with determination. Pine don't say I didn't warn you. But know this if you will have to practice with your Sharingan a lot and all the techniques I will teach you. After those words the darkness flame started to swirl around Naruto, then entered his body and started screaming out in pain. His orange jacket burst into flames and burned his upper torso, the pain was so intense that his skin ripped off and regenerated, and he started banging his head on Kaiubi's cage. His bones broke and re-healed, his hair fell out and grew back, and he started bleeding out of every hole in his body. After all of that mind-racking pain the last thing Naruto felt was his eyes bursting into a red haze and fell unconscious. After what seemed like hours the pain finally stopped, Naruto woke up and ran to the nearest river to see his eyes, but when he got there he was in for a surprise. What he saw shocked him. He lost all the baby fat on his face and body, leaving nothing but muscles. He developed some six-pack abs, but the scar he received from Kakashi's attack was still there, along with a well-defined chest. And from what he could tell his shoulders were a lot wider and his biceps were well-defined. Then he noticed on his right arm he had a black dragon tattoo on his entire right arm. His face was well-defined and his whisker-like scars were darker like a tattoo and his canines were a little longer and a lot sharper than normal, his blonde hair went down to his shoulders and had black streaks, he was also at the height of 5'7". But the most shocking thing was his eyes. He had the familiar red Sharingan only with four black tomos, but when he concentrated he closed his eyes for a second and opened them up to see his combine together to create a black diamond, however his sclera stayed red. Shinigami, what happened to my eyes? They do not look like Sasuke team Sharingan. Naruto said. I think I made a mistake. Shinigami answered. A mistake, how? I accidentally gave you the Manjekyo Sharingan. Manjekyo Sharingan what's that? Asked a confused Naruto. Naruto the Manjekyo Sharingan is the next and final level of the Sharingan you see it has three special abilities. One is Tsukiyomi, this is one of the most powerful in existence. It's named after the goddess of the moon, this is generated by the left Manjekyo eye. This highly advanced technique cannot be used extensively because of the toll it places on the user. To utilize the illusion, the clan member will look into the eyes of his opponent and cast a Jinjutsu spell on them. The illusion takes place in the mind of the one affected, while under the victim is at the total mercy of the user. The user has full control over space and time and the, and can place the one affected through any hell they desire for any length desired. The technique itself only lasts for but a second in reality, but the one affected could have lasted through several days of torture. It is said only a natural born member of the Ichiha clan can overcome the illusion. To counter the technique, however, Manjikyu is not required. A highly trained normal Sharingan user can break the illusion, causing the Manjikyu user to experience additional weakness from using it. While the illusion is never the same twice, some elements always remain. The first and foremost similarity is the red moon, which hangs in the sky of each illusion. The moon, in turn, casts a red light throughout the illusion, giving the background a blood-red appearance, while the figures within the illusion are solid black with white outlines. The next one is the Amaterasu which has the same qualities as the darkness flame. You see, this legend is unique to the Ichiha clan. Named after the goddess of the sun, this is an ninjutsu technique which uses the Manjikyu form of the Sharingan eye to create a powerful black fire. This is generated by the right Manjikyu eye. It has been said that anything within the Manjikyu's vision will burn to ash if consumed by the fire. The fire itself is said to burn for seven days and seven nights. Because of the amount of chakra needed to use the technique, it can only be used on a very limited basis daily. Though it is regarded as the strongest of Manjikyu's physical attacks, usage of the ability will degrade the eye further and lead the user to blindness. And the last one is Susanu named after the god of the sea and storms, is a technique which uses the Manjikyu form of the Sharingan eye to create a sword-wielding spectral form which will surround the user. This is generated by both Manjikyu eyes. Susanu will first form around the user as a skeleton. This skeletal form will then generate muscle and armor for battle and wield both a sword and shield. The sword is formed out of the sake in the gourd it holds, meaning the sword has no true physical form. This legendary weapon, known as Tatsuka's sword and the Sakagari sake cutting long sword, utilizes the main ability of the. Anyone or anything cut by the blade will be sealed away into a Jinjutsu of blissful oblivion until the end of time. It is said the sword is thus the ultimate counter to Orochimaru's Kusanagi grass cutter sword. The shield is known as Yada's mirror. It is said this shield can defend against any attack. 
together the sword and shield will make the Susanoo user nearly invincible. Like other Manjikyu techniques, usage of Susanoo will damage the eyes and health of the user. But these jutsus require a lot of chakra. You should only use them if your precious people are in danger. Shinigami explained. Naruto deactivated his eyes until they were the true blue color everyone knows and loves mostly. Dot. Hot damn those techniques are powerful. But it makes me not want to use them. Isn't there a way for me to use them and not kill me? Naruto asked. Yes there is one way but you won't like it and you'll never be able to get it anyways. Mind telling me anyways? Well. I guess it wouldn't hurt to tell you. Alright listen up because I'm only going to tell you this once, the history of how he became so powerful. Madara, the founder of the Achiha clan, gained great power and immortality, but at a nasty price. You see. In order to gain the Manjiku Sharingan you must murder your best friend in cold blood, Shinigami stopped at Naruto's horrified expression, but then continued after a minute. No matter how cold-hearted you are there will always be a twinge of guilt over the death you caused. This awakens the ultimate form of the Sharingan. The other price of this is a disease that comes with the power, it slowly eats away at the eyes and chakra centers within the eyes, causing the holder of the Manjekyo to eventually go completely blind. He stopped again so Naruto could process the information. However if you have a sibling who also has a Manjikyu level Sharingan and you steal that sibling's eyes to replace your own, it not only stops the disease completely, but it grants a horrible level of tainted power and immortality to the one who did this. Ladara was the first to discover it, and I can only hope he will be the last. Shinigami finished his lecture. Naruto on the other hand was speechless, words can't even describe how he felt. Instead he ran into the forest until he found himself clearing with plenty of trees, a huge pond, and a few boulders. Naruto then concentrated his chakra and immediately felt heavy, but supported himself and walked toward the river. He concentrated chakra to his feet and walked onto the water only to fall in it. Naruto dragged himself to the shore, spat out a mouthful of water and said, it's going to be a long week. It took Naruto two days to finally walk on water, and he wanted to learn some jutsus really bad, so he asked Shinigami and Kaiubi if he was ready to learn them yet. Hey Kaiubi sensei Shinigami sensei am I ready to learn any yet? Asked Naruto. Well. You have improved so I'll teach you fist of the mortal flame. Replied Shinigami. And I'll teach you the fireball jutsu. Said Kaiubi. Thanks guys. Okay Aaron, activate your Sharingan because I'm only going to show you this once. Said Shinigami as he prepared the attack. Naruto quickly activated his Sharingan. Dark fire started swirling around Shinigami's fist and stayed there until the flame covered his whole fist, then he yelled out Fist of the Mortal Flame. And slammed it into a tree, totally disintegrating it along with six other trees that were behind it. Wow that's an awesome attack. What did I tell you about your voice? Yelled Kaiubi. Sorry. You have to gather the darkness flame around your hand in order to use this attack. It's just like gathering chakra onto the soles of your feet. And since I'm so nice I'll tell you a secret, you can use this attack to create the double fist of the mortal flame. Said Shinigami as he disappeared. Okay Brad I will just send an image to your head in order for you to learn this attack. Said Kaiubi. And why is that? Naruto asked bluntly. Because I don't have Dumbus hands. Oh. So Kaiubi sent him an image of a ninja doing the hand seals and executing them. After Kaiubi sent him the image, he started working on it right away. He inhaled the proper hand seals and tried to blow out the fire, only to throw up. What the hell was that? Kaiubi, why didn't I breathe fire? Asked Naruto. You didn't concentrate chakra into your throat you idiot. Replied Kaiubi in an all-knowing voice. Oh. Yay. Now burn that puke after you learn that dot. Fine. So Naruto tried it again only to breath out smoke and jumped into the river. After swallowing a bunch of water he surfaced and yelled out, Kaiubi why didn't you warn me I would burn my throat? In Naruto's head. Both Kaiubi and Shinigami were laughing at Naruto's dispense. Ahahaha <laughs> Kaiubi was rich. Shinigami laughed while clutching his sides. Yay and you said and I quote I bet you couldn't burn him. Boy you were wrong. Laughed Kaiubi while rolling around in his cage. Yay but I didn't mean it literally ha ha ha. You guys suck mumbled Naruto. Then he got back to training, it took him three days to complete it. He's not using his Sharingan because he's not going to end up like Kakashi or Sasuke for that matter. Now to try this out fire style. Fireball jutsu. Yelled Naruto, shooting a fireball the size of a small car and scorching a tree. Alright now for fist of the mortal flame technique. Naruto started gathering the darkness flame around his right fist, only for it to catch on fire and jump into the river again. Thus making Shinigami and Kaiubi laugh at his dispense. One day later. Hey kid, listen up, said Kaiubi. What is it? Shinigami and I have been talking. You two are getting along. That's a surprise. 
don't interrupt me, now as I was saying Shinigami and I have been talking and we think you should get your first kill ASAP. Naruto turned white as a sheet and replied. Kill. You want me to kill. Yes we do. I can't. You have no choice in the matter. No that's not what I meant I mean there is no one to kill. That's no excuse. Shinigami interrupted as he decided to stop this ridiculous argument. But Shinigami sensei. Naruto whined. Listen, I want you to kill three people by the end of the week. If you can't, I'll take away your second chance at life and send you to hell. But if you do kill three people by the end of the week I will be and I will teach you some new jutsus. Said Shinigami as he disappeared leaving Naruto to ponder. Great if I don't kill I'll die, but if I kill I'll live and learn some new jutsus. The problem is there is nobody to kill. Naruto thought. Wait a second Shinigami sensei said I had the end of the week. Then that means. I only have one day. Damn you Shinigami sensei. Naruto was pissed, no he was beyond pissed why? Because he had one day to live unless he killed three people. Okay where can I find three people to kill in one day? Thought Naruto as he jumped through the trees trying to find three people to kill. He searched until it was past 11.50, he was about to give up until he saw smoke coming from a camp. Ami-sama I've never been a religious person, but if this is a bandit camp with three people in it, I'll be more religious. Naruto prayed. After his small prayer Naruto jumped to the nearest tree to overhear their conversation. Hey boss, are you sure about this? Yes I'm sure Wave is far too weak to defend themselves. What kind of booty do you think they have? Steve stops acting like a pirate. Why? Asks Steve. Because it makes us look like jackasses. Shut it Syria. You shut it. Retorted Syria. Both of you shut up. Sorry Cena. Said both Syria and Steve in a union. Now Cyclops knows that Wave is poor. But there are a bunch of men, women and children for slave labor. Plus since Gatu is dead we can take over his company and we'll be freaking rich by the end of the month. Yay. They cheered. People that deserve to die thank you Kami-sama, oh shit I have one minute left. Thought Naruto. Naruto knew he didn't have another second to think, so he created three shadow clones, they took out their kunai and charged them. All three Naruto's had an easy kill, they simply got behind them and slit their throats meeting the deadline just in time. Well kid you surprised me. Shinigami said as his ghostly form appeared in front of him. Shinigami sensei, I'm weird. That's the side effect of your first kill, don't worry you'll get over it. Thanks. Naruto replied. Now get to sleep you have to get your sword tomorrow. After that Naruto fell asleep where he stood, not feeling the burning sensation in his lower left arm. The next morning. When Naruto woke up he remembered that he was broke, but then he remembered he killed three bandits. So he searched their corpses in camp, finding $10,000 in total. After that he gathered the corpses and their equipment together and shouted fire style. Fireball jutsu. He shot a fireball the size of a small trailer burning the corpses and headed off to town. Blacksmiths. As he arrived at the blacksmith shop and saw the old man. Hey old man, do you have my sword finished? Why yes here you go sonny. Replied the old man noticing his change in height, hair, dragon tattoo, and the number 3 on his arm. Bang when did that kid get so tall? And where did he get that awesome tattoo? Naruto inspected the sword, it had a plain black sheath. He took the sword out and liked what he saw, the blade was pure black, so it wouldn't reflect any light off of it, its hilt had grey and black thread covering it, and the handguard was black as well. Now Sonny that would be $10,000. The old man told him the amount. The old Naruto would yell out saying that was an outrageous price, but he just took out a gamachan, his frog wallet pulled out all of his money, and tossed it to the old man saying, don't spend it all in one place. As he walked back into the forest. And Kami I didn't run into my team. Thought Naruto. Yep you said it kid kid. Said both Shinigami and Kaiubi nodding their heads with their arms crossed. Forest. After Naruto came back to the forest he noticed the number 3 on his left arm. Shinigami sensei, why is the number 3 on my left arm? Took you long enough, that is your body count tattoo, it will change every time you kill a person. Said Shinigami as he appeared in his solid form next to Naruto. Well that's nice. Naruto said sarcastically. Naruto gave me your sword. I'm going to seal Kaiubi in it. Naruto complied and gave him his sword. Now Naruto, I need you to give me some of your blood and put it in this cup. Said Shinigami as a plastic cup appeared out of thin air. Which he filled to the rim. The process took three hours until Kaiubi was transferred into Naruto's sword which took some drastic changes. The sheath was now white with a black dragon design on it, its blade was still pure black, but it now had some blood red trimmings, the hilt had blood red and black thread covering it, and the handguard was still black. I believe it's time for your sword training. Shinigami said sadistically, making Naruto gulp. Naruto was tired, no he was beyond tired, for two weeks he's been trying to create a sword style for himself. 
they increased his chakra weights up to 600 pounds. 100 pounds for his arms and 200 for his legs. Naruto had been practicing various sword stances and practicing the basic sword movements, so far he'd done 10,000 horizontal slices, 10,000 diagonal cuts, and 10,000 cuts while spinning in the air to practice aerial attacks. Using Kaiubi his sword name for such a long period left him drained, his muscles were straining to the max, his arms cramping, and sweat dripping down his muscular body, his shirt some 30 feet away. Screw this. I need rest. Naruto said wiping the sweat from his golden blonde and black locks on his whisker mark cheek, he plopped down lightly onto the ground, his breath labored. He laid there for some time, and between one thought and the next he drifted off to sleep. Five hours later. Naruto woke with a jolt grabbing Kaiubi turning to see a scared crimson colored baby fox. Damn it Naruto it's just a harmless kid, man I'm way too jumpy. Are you okay? Naruto asked the fox. I'm scared. Said a female voice coming from the fox. Naruto wasn't surprised a fox could talk, hell he had an iron-tailed demon inside of him. Don't be scared, I'll take you to your parents. The fox looked like she was about to cry. Do you have a mother or father little fox? Naruto asked. The fox now had a huge look of sadness in her eyes. No, they were killed by hunters and I was left alone. The fox said with even more sadness in its voice. That's horrible. So you're all alone, little one. Naruto said. The fox nodded. Naruto smiled at his fox-like grin then I'll be your dad. The baby fox looked up at Naruto with excitement in its face. You will. Really? Naruto nodded his head. Daddy. Yelled the baby fox as it jumped on Naruto and started licking his face. Naruto started laughing. Stop it. Stop it. He said between laughs. The fox stopped and brushed her head against Naruto's chest and purred. Now before I forget, what's your name, little one? Ami. Friend, that's a nice name, I'm Naruto Uzumaki, the next Hokage. Seven days later. Naruto did not like this day at all, because today was the day that the bandit army would come to wave. He was the only one who could save them. He looked down at his daughter sleeping peacefully, he did not want to wake her, but he must. He shook Ami until she was awake. Ami. Yes daddy. The little fox yawned. Listen daddy's going to do something important tonight, so I want you to stay here until I get back okay. Naruto said. Okay daddy. Ami replied as she went back to sleep. That's my girl said Naruto as he got up and walked over to a nearby tree to set Ami down. Midnight. Naruto arrived at the bandit's camp and scouted the surroundings to find any escape routes. He found three so he created three shadow clones blocking those said routes. Hey Shinigami-sensei I count 102 bandits in the camp and they're loaded with a lot of money and jewels that could help rebuild wave country. Did you have a heart of gold no wonder why those girls love you. Said Shinigami with a smile. Which made Kami shiver up in heaven. Shy. Shinigami sensei. Naruto blushed. Okay kid that's enough go and attack and kill them. Kaiubi commanded. Fine. After that pointless conversation Naruto took out two kunai and charged the nearest bandit and stabbed him in the head. He then stood and looked at his enemies. This is what being a ninja was. Killing. Or being killed. It was just that simple now. He would feel little from taking life but he would always hold it in reverence. Forming a hand seal, he decided that he could very much live with that. Shadow clone jutsu. His voice rang out across the clearing the mercenaries were currently scurrying in, and an instant later, a blanket of smoke obscured their position. The smoke cleared, revealing twenty of Naruto's now standing among the original. By now, a great many mercenaries and bandits had gathered at the site, and all of them looked dumbstruck to be facing an army of identical blondes. Naruto smirked with a mental command, his clones charged. A few were taken out as soon as they reached the mercenaries, but more than a few of the unwieldy men fell to sword, shuriken, and kunai. The mercenaries and bandits, seeing that they were outnumbered and outskilled, began to retreat. Naruto wouldn't allow it. Drawing another kunai and his katana, he charged the first mercenary in his path. He brought his sword down across the man's back at a diagonal pitch, causing blood to spray from the man's wound. It had been deep enough that the man would probably have bleed out. He saw a bandit fleeing who wouldn't allow him to live, so he threw his kunai at the man and watched it dig into his neck. Finding another mercenary, he readied his sword and slashed horizontally, hoping to cleave the man in two. Unlike before, however, this mercenary seemed to be on guard and he raised his own shoddy sword to defend against Naruto's. Naruto's sword clashed with the man's and produced a few sparks. Pivoting on his heel, he twirled clockwise around the man, crouching in the process. Using the momentum of his twirl, he brought his sword in a low arc across the man's kneecaps, managing to evade the man's attempt to parry. 
his opponent screamed in pain and dropped to his injured knees before Naruto brought his sword into a cross grip and cleanly decapitated the man, stepping away so as to avoid the blood spray that accompanied the arterial pressure. Another mercenary charged him head on, seeing his comrade's death. He brought his sword into a high parry position and blocked the mercenary's sword cleanly before dragging his sword across the length of the other man's blade and bringing it back to a plunging position. In the blink of an eye, he removed the chakra from his weights, and in another blink, the man was impaled swiftly through the heart. Naruto's blade sticking out of his back, dripping blood. He pulled out his sword only to see the remaining bandits and mercenaries running at him. He smirked, called over the rest of his surviving shadow clones, and did some hand seals, they inhaled, and shouted, fire style. Fireball jutsu. They blew a bunch of fireballs until they became the size of five huge houses and burned them all to death. After he saw the results of his and threw up. As he was looking down trying to catch his breath he got hit in the side hard. And flew into a tree feeling his ribs break. At the same time all of his clones popped out of existence and a flood of information loaded into his mind, showing that all of the men he and his clones killed. So the shadow clone jutsu shows the user what his clone experienced, this means my training will become a lot easier. Why didn't I think of this sooner, Georgia I'm such an idiot. Then he looked up and saw a huge man at 7-1, he was wearing red and green samurai armor. He had a black bushy beard and a green eye because his right eye was covered by an eye patch which covered a nasty scar going over his eye. His hair was long and unruly and also was wielding a giant warhammer. Cyclops said Naruto. I'm surprised you know my name Brad. He spat. Yeah your men Steve, Cena and Syria couldn't keep their mouths shut. What did you do to them? He demanded. I killed them. Said Naruto without remorse. Why would you do that to my men? Cyclops yelled with rage. I did it because you and your men were going to massacre, rape, steal, and force everyone into slavery while wave while it was still recovering. We are bandits, thieves, murders, and mercenaries, that's what we are supposed to do and we're proud of it. You have no idea what our lives were like until we joined together. That was the last straw, ignoring the pain in his ribs Naruto activated his Sharingan which surprised his opponent and rushed at him. The enemy sensed this and rushed out of the way, Naruto turned around and thought damn this guy's strong, ah my ribs hurt like a SOB. I still haven't learned how to control the darkness flame yet, but I guess I'll have to try. If I don't I'm dead. Naruto thought and started gathering the darkness flame around his right fist. His enemy also turned around and readied his warhammer then at the same moment they dashed at each other. The mercenary swung his warhammer and Naruto raised his fist and yelled out fist of the mortal flame. And both the warhammer and fist of the mortal flame collided in a huge flash of light. Both Nado's fist and the mercenary's warhammer struggled with each other for dominance until the warhammer gave out and shattered into a million pieces. Then Naruto's fist slammed into the mercenary's chest and he screamed as his body burned. After the fight Naruto reflected upon what he did to that man. After he used fist of the mortal flame there was nothing left, no ashes and no bones, his thoughts were interrupted by Shinigami. Kid that was a great fight you really impressed me and you've mastered fist of the mortal flame, so as a reward I'll give you your clothes right now. Why? Just look at yourself. Naruto complied and deactivated his Sharingan and walked over to the nearest stream, he was shocked at what he saw. He was covered from head to toe in blood and his pants were ripped into shorts, his sandals were gone and his shirt was only a few pieces of cloth. Shinigami Sensei, how come I didn't notice that my clothes were nothing but rags? Kid that was an adrenaline rush. A what? Sigh an adrenaline rush is a sudden burst of energy from an increase in the hormone and neurotransmitter adrenaline, especially increased heart rate and blood pressure, perspiration, blood sugar, and metabolism. Shinigami explained. English please. Basically you get a rush of energy. It makes you faster, stronger, and you don't feel pain if you get hurt. But that all wears off when the danger or whatever caused the rush is gone. Wow. Yay. Now enough of this crap, here's your new clothes. In a black swirl Naruto was wearing black steel tooth combat boots, along with some black cargo pants with a lot of pockets with a few scrolls in them, and a black belt. His kunai holster was on his right leg, and his shuriken holster and a few other pouches were on his belt. He wore a black trench coat with its leaves ripped off with a kanji symbol for shinigami on the back, he wore no shirt but had white medical tape covering his lower abdomen, showing off his six-pack and covering the scar Kakashi gave him. He then looked at his right arm, only to see a lot of white medical tape covering his dragon tattoo. His forehead protector had black cloth and was secured on his left bicep. Naruto suddenly felt the pain in his lower left arm and saw the number 105. Shinigami Sensei, will my arm hurt every time I kill a person? Naruto asked. After you kill a few more people you won't even feel it anymore, so don't worry about it. 
And before I forget those scrolls in your pockets are for sealing objects into them, so all you have to do is open them and stuff your items into them. All right, Shinigami Sensei. Replied Naruto still feeling pain in his side. It don't worry I'll fix your ribs. It took Naruto three hours to clean up the mess he made and another two hours to sort the valuables from the junk. During the sorting, Naruto found some medical tape and wrapped it around his lower left arm. He also found a lot of food and devoured most of it and some scrolls with some awesome jutsus in them. He also found a black and red mask pink handya mask from Marani Kenshin. Hey kid, you should wear that mask, Shinigami said. Why? It would put fear into your enemies making you look like me, it would cover your Sharingan when you activate it, plus it goes with your outfit. Naruto just shrugged and hooked it on his belt. Before I forget what you are naming your Sharingan. I'll call it the Karashigan. Dark copy I. The next day Naruto took the day off to reflect on what he did. Hey do you think I did the right thing? Did I really don't know what to think, all I know is that you saved a lot of people from being massacred, now let me sleep. Said Kaiubi and left Naruto to his thoughts. Well I guess it's time for me to get back to my team. Said Naruto as he put his Hanya mask over his face and covered his head with his hood. He then put Ami on his shoulders and walked back to wave. It took Naruto 15 minutes to get to the bridge now supporting his katana on his belt, he had his trench coat hood up and he was wearing his mask. When he got there he got a lot of shocked expressions until he met up with his team. Sasuke's was curiosity and a hint of jealousy. Sakura was pissed offness and had lots of fear. Kakashi's was admiration and seriousness, Zabuza was really confused, and Haku was speechless. Finally Sasuke broke the silence. Hey Dobe what's with the outfit? Sasuke smirked. I thought it was time for a change. Naruto replied coolly. Don't call Sasuke kun a bastard Naruto. Yelled Sakura. Shut it Sakura. Naruto snapped coldly. This of course surprised the entire team, especially Sakura. While they were in a daze Naruto went up to Tazuna. Tazuna I know getting waved back to normal won't be easy. So I got this for you. Said Naruto, handing two sealing scrolls leaving him with five. What's this? He asked. Those my friends are sealing scrolls one of them contains $100,000 to help you guys out and the other contains furniture and lumber to help rebuild your homes. He replied. Everyone. Minus Team 7's Abusa and Haku. Who heard this wonderful news started crying with happiness. Naruto thank you for everything, but can I ask you a favor? Sure what is it? Can you please take off your mask so we can see the face of our savior? Tazuna asked. Sure. Replied Naruto as he took off his mask. And when it came off a majority of the female population blushed as red as a tomato or fainted. Naruto then hugged Inari saying, I'll come back and visit you I promise. He then put his mask back on and with that team 7, Haku and Zabuza walked away on the bridge. And with that team 7, Haku and Zabuza walked away on the bridge. Inari that boy gave you hope again as did the people of this country, so all in favor of the bridge being called the Great Naruto Bridge, say I. Tazuna said. I. Said the villagers in the back. It's decided, from now and forever the Great Naruto Bridge shall stand. Tazuna with pride. The trip back was uneventful, except for Sasuke trying to figure out Naruto's change and Sakura trying to take off his mask. Only to get yelled at by Naruto and getting a lecture from Kakashi. Zabuza asked Naruto some questions which he answered truthfully. Okay he lied a little he said he had a growth spurt, got some tattoos, put some highlight streaks in his hair and worked out a lot. He also told the truth, saying he killed 105 bandits and mercenaries, took their cash to buy his weight and katana, but he didn't tell him he learned something new. Dot, and Haku was holding and petting Ami, which Sakura tried to pet only for Ami to bite her. She hates her too, yay. Once they got back to Konoha, Sasuke went to train with Sakura following him like the fangirl she is. Well Kakashi took Naruto and the others to the Hokage. The Hokage's office. The Hokage looked at the two now in his office. Both of them stared at him nervously. The old man gave a small cough. Well. Zabuza, you are currently a missing nin and a wanted felon to the Mizukage, and Haku you are still technically a citizen of another country. While your bloodline was hated and there was even an attempt on your life, your clan was still registered under it, and any prominent clan member cannot change countries without the feudal lord's recognition. Said the Hokage. Both of them looked down not liking where this was going. Their moves were silent, they weren't going to kill the old man, but they were definitely preparing for a fight to get out. The old man noticed all of this even though he wasn't facing them. That's how it would be normally. He let his words trail off at that, and both Haku and Zabuza stopped what they were doing. I beg your pardon? Zabuza asked. Haku? How much do you know about Naruto? Asked the old man, ignoring Zabuza's question. Naruto-kun? Haku froze as the man mentioned Naruto. At this Zabuza raised his non-existent eyebrow at the word kun. Yes. 
if that's what you call him, said the Hokage with a small modest smile. I didn't get to know him all that well but I owe him a lot and I would like to, said Haku blushing as she thought about Naruto. She definitely wanted to get to know him. Ah, I see, said the Hokage with a small knowing smile. Then let it be known that Kakashi succeeded in driving lightning blade through your heart Haku. And Zabuza you were so overcome with grief that at the sight of Geodu. Who let's say. He filed Haku's name, you charged at him with only a kunai in your mouth. You then ran through the man's army killing as you went and finally sliced a man's throat. You then died from your wounds. Zabuza's eyes twitched. You certainly have some imagination. Said Zabuza. The old man only smiled at this. Yeah I know, but Zabuza I have something to ask you. What is it? How strong do you think Haku is? Saratobi asked. Well I'd say Chunin. Zabuza replied. After that Saratobi reached under his desk, pulled out a Chunin vest and gave it to Haku. Um. Hokage-sama. What is Haku? I was wondering if I can train myself to be a Mednin. I'll contact the hospital. Now I need you two to leave, I need to speak to Naruto and Kakashi alone. After those words Haku and Zabuza left. Now Naruto Kakashi has told me you died, came back to life, and you're getting trained by Kaiubi. Is this true? Sirotobi asked. Yes, it's true. Naruto replied. And why is he doing this? He said he didn't want a weak vessel. After all he said he would be humiliated if other demons found out that the strongest demon in existence was sealed in a weak person. I guess that makes sense, okay you two are now dismissed. Wait, I need to talk to you, Hokage-sama. Naruto said. This surprised Kakashi and Sirotobi, because they always heard Naruto call Sirotobi an old man, they never heard Naruto call him Hokage-sama, so this was a serious issue. So Kakashi went out the door in order for them to conduct their business. Hokage-sama, what I told you wasn't the whole truth. Naruto admitted. Surprised, Sirotobi asked what he meant. Sighing Naruto took off his mask told him the story about him meeting Shinigami, learning some techniques from Kaiubi and Shinigami, him killing 105 people, and telling him why Kaiubi attacked Konoha. Which shocked Saratobi and thought he would have a heart attack. He did not tell him about his Karashigan yet. Wow, Naruto this is a lot to take in. Saratobi exclaimed. That's not the worst of it. Naruto said. What do you mean? Saratobi asked again, getting a bad feeling in his gut. I want to know who my parents are said Naruto activating his Karashigan, then activating his Manjeku Karashigan, further shocking the Hokage. But how? It was Shinigami Sensei who gave me this power, and I would know who my mother and father were. I knew this day would come, but I didn't think it would be so soon. Saratobi sighed. Very well, your mother was Kashina Chiha, and your father was Minato Namakas the Yandame Hokage. What? Naruto's scream could be heard all over the world. Naruto I'm so sorry. Old man you owe me big. Naruto said. I know, your father said you get everything when you turn 16, but I can give you a few things to survive until then. So what will it be? I only need a few things. What is it? Saratobi asked. I need a new home far away from the villagers. Well I could put you into it. The forest of death. Naruto interrupted. What? That area is forbidden, only Chunin and above are allowed in it. Saratobi exclaimed. Old man I'm as strong as a Chunin, so I'm allowed in. But. Hey if I can kill 105 people by myself, I can live in the forest of death. So I find you win, here's the map to an abandoned cottage. Said Saratobi as he handed Naruto a map. Thanks old man now, I would like a few scrolls for training, preferably my father's favorite jutsus while he was training. I'll deliver them to the cottage later. Please don't tell this information to anyone. Naruto pleaded. Don't worry I won't tell a soul. Saratobi reassured like I would tell those council bastards anything. He thought bitterly. And I have something that could help you with your paperwork. What is it? He really hates paperwork. Use the Shadow Clone Jutsu to do all the work. Naruto smirked as he walked off to the Forest of Death. Saratobi was as white as a sheet after what Naruto said. I was called the professor, master of everything. Dot, yet Naruto came up with something so simple, I need a drink. Said Saratobi as he took out a huge bottle of sake and started chugging it down. The Forest of Death. It took Naruto five hours to find his abandoned cottage. Why did it take him so long you ask? Well for one he never read a map before so he got lost. And two he was attacked by man-eating plants, animals, and it was in the SS part of the forest. And if you didn't know the SS part of the forest is really dangerous, only high Anbu members and the Hokage are allowed in it. And for Naruto he's a lucky bastard not to get killed. Now the cottage was the size of an average two-story house with a basement. It had a kitchen with a table and four chairs, a stove, and an empty fridge all powered by a generator in the basement. 
The house cottage had two bathrooms with a shower bath, sink, and toilet. Other than those rooms the cottage house was completely empty. Until Naruto opened his scrolls. Now the house had a couch, a recliner, and two lamps in the living room. He put three beds into the three bedrooms, along with some dressers, nightstands, and lamps. And the basement was now a library, it was filled with scrolls containing history, human autonomy, and other various books. He also stored some of the weapons he stole from those bandits. As he was sorting through some scrolls he heard someone knock on his door. Naruto opened the door to see a panting Hokage. Hey old man, how are you doing? He snickered. Very funny Naruto, can I come in? Saratobi said sarcastically. Sure. When Saratobi got into the house, he was astounded that Naruto had already moved in. So Naruto, when did you get all of this furniture? Asked Saratobi. I got them from the bandits I killed. Really, so how do you like living here in the SS part of the forest that I accidentally gave you? The Hokage asked nervously. I actually like it, it's very dangerous, I can train here without people spying on me, and it keeps people from hurting me. Naruto replied. Yay, well. Anyways here's the scrolls you asked for. Said Saratobi as he reached into his robe and pulled out ten scrolls. Well I'll see you around, oh and Kakashi is going to see you guys tomorrow at 2.30, later Naruto. Bye old man. Said Naruto as he went back to work. After a few hours of working on his house, Naruto finally went to bed feeling safe for the first time in his life. Well as safe as you can get in the forest of death. The next day. Naruto woke up at 5.30 and went into town to do some shopping. His first stop was the grocery store, where he bought grapes, lettuce, carrots, other vegetables, meat, orange juice, cereal, milk, and of course ramen. He went to the cashier, only to notice that he was drowsy. Hey Mr. Cashier, I would like to buy these groceries. Naruto said. Um. Let's see grapes, lettuce, carrots, some other vegetables, meat, orange juice, cereal, milk, and ramen. That would be $117.75. The cashier quietly checked and bagged the groceries. As Naruto paid the man he came to one conclusion, store owners were not morning people so they didn't recognize him. Thereby making things cheaper for him. His next and last stop was the pharmacy to purchase some aspirin. When he got there he heard a person talking and coughing. Hey cough do you cough have my cough cough medicine yet? Yes it came in at 4 o'clock, here you go. Said the shop owner. Hey it is one of Konoha's special jounins. He's also the one who was judging the Chunin exam's third stage preliminary matches. He is said to be one of the most talented shinobi of the leaf, but his apparently chronic sickness seems to have made him weak. He has bags under his eyes and doesn't look healthy at all. He wore the standard jounin vest, black shinobi pants, blue sandals, and a bandana. His hair was brown and his eyes were black, but what Naruto noticed was he had a katana. Hmm. I wonder if he's willing to teach me wondered Naruto as he followed him out of the store and onto training field 20 and jumped into a bush. Training field 20. Naruto watched Hei do some practice cuts with his katana, then shouted a very weird technique, Dance of the Crescent Moon, he created three shadow clones, attacked a training dummy with extend able swords in a complicated sword dancing pattern, and destroyed it. Cough you can come out now cough. said. Naruto got up and simply scratched the back of his head while giving Hei a sheepish grin. So, the Kyubi kid is back huh? But why is he talking to me? He noted neutrally, not really having anything against Naruto personally. So when did you notice me? Since the cough pharmacy. Wow, you're good. Said Naruto. Let's cut the cough chit chat, what do cough you want with me? Haid asked. Naruto stood straight up, looked him in the eye and said, I would like you to train me in the art of dot. And why cough would I do that? He asked intrigued. You are probably the best swordsman in Konoha, you've mastered the dance of the crescent moon at a young age, and my sensei would not train me even if I asked. Naruto replied. Who is cough your cough? The Kashi Haddock. Naruto said, making the man frown a bit. And who's on cough your team? Sakura Hiruno and Sasuke Chia. The Chia. Hey, spat venomously. Huh, did I say something wrong? Naruto. The Chihas are cough the reason my brother cough was killed during a cough important mission. I'm sorry to hear that. And let me cough guess Kakashi is neglecting cough you and the Haruno girl cough for the Achiha. Yes. He replied. I'll help you, cough, but it might cough kill you. Said Haid. Deal, oh I have to go, it's almost 7 o'clock. Got to train replied Naruto while running away. Naruto was running to training field 7 until he heard screaming and ran towards it. Naruto ran towards the screaming as fast he could. He hopped up on the fence and observed the scene in front of him. There were two people in front of him, one was a blonde-haired girl carrying a giant fan, she seemed to be in a conversation with the other stranger. The stranger was wearing makeup on his face and had what Naruto assumed was a weapon, bandaged and placed on his back. 
He was also holding Konohamaru in his left hand. Let go of Konohamaru right now you meanie. Naruto looked over to the left and saw Mogi, Yudin, Sasuke, and Sakura. Mogi was shouting at the stranger telling no demanding him to put Konohamaru down this instant. On the other hand Yudin was on the ground shaking, Sakura was looking worried but trying to apologize to the two ninja about what happened. And Sasuke was in a fighting stance and was more than willing to show off his skills. From the emblem on their headband Naruto guessed that they were sand ninja here for the chunin exams. Kaiubi told him about it, he decided to get closer and listen to the ninja's conversation. What do you think you are doing kid? Let me go, you big bully. Konohamaru shouted. Bankuro, just put him down. The blonde girl said in a bored tone. After I teach this brat a lesson. Wait till Naruto Naisen gets here. He is going to kick your ass. Konohamaru shouted with a boost of hope. Naruto frowned under his mask, he couldn't do anything well, and Konohamaru was like his little brother, so he decided to intervene. He pulled his sword out and ran at Kankuro hitting his hand with the flat end of his blade. Breaking it and dropping Konohamaru. Naruto looked at the ninja in front of him, he looked at his forehead protector, Sand Nin, you must be here for the Chunin exams, you are a guest in the leaf, and you will behave as such. Damari was surprised at the boy's restraint, the blonde clearly could have taken her brother apart at that moment, though whether he could in a full-blown battle remained to be seen. She generally had a low opinion of Konoha ninjas, but this boy looked younger than her youngest brother, yet stronger than herself or her brother beside her. She looked at his mask and his blue eyes through the mask which turned to her, she found she could not look away, it was clear the boy was intelligent and his confidence seemed absolute but not arrogant, he was tempered as if by fire, all this she saw from one look. The sword swung away as did the blonde's gaze from the Kanoichi, he resheathed his sword. Besides, I don't think your companion is pleased. Ara's eyes widened ever so slightly, he abandoned what he was going to say to his brother as he stood under the branch of a tree. Naruto noticed the girl and the black-clad boy visibly begin to shake, in a swirl of sand the red-haired boy appeared in front of Naruto. Who are you? Naruto observed the Reed's expression, the look in his disturbing eyes, the odd tattoo with the kanji symbol for love on his head, and the way he held himself casually. The other ninja didn't answer, he just looked into the blue eyes of the stranger before him. The atmosphere changed as Gara began leaking out killing intent, watching for the blonde's response. Naruto just continued to stare at the redeeded sand nin, his arms crossed, he looked into pale green eyes, the killing intent simply washing over him even as it grew. Damari was shivering under the pressure of her brother's foul intent, she looked at her other brother to see he was faring no better, looking at the four people with the blonde they were not suffering as bad as herself, but they had were looking at the blonde. Apparently his presence was powerfully strengthening, and as she too looked at the masked ninja in her shock, almost forgot her own fear. The blonde boy just stood there and returned her brother's gaze, his body perfectly steady, and though his expression was firm there was no fear there. She had never met anybody that had been able to simply dismiss her brother's killing intent as if it was nothing, her fear grew once again, she was afraid of this boy. Naruto worried for the others and decided enough was enough and flared his own intent from nothing to match that of his opponent for a mere fraction of a second. The breath left Amari, Kankuro and the other Kanohan in, but Gara's intent suddenly stopped. There were seven sharp intakes of breath as relief swept over Yudin, Konohamaru, Mogi, Sasuke, Sakura, and the two other sand men. Gara spoke in his usual almost dead voice, I am Gara of the sand, these two are Kankuro and Tamari, you are. Naruto. Naruto kept his tone blank, he didn't like this boy at all. Courtesy of Naruto owns Kaiubi. Gara nodded, interesting. He glanced at his siblings, let's go. Without argument the group left. As they left Amari and Kankuro saw the glint in Gara's eye, one that they recognized, Gara had found someone he wanted to kill. Naruto looked around, he saw the Konohamaru core, Sasuke, and Sakura, he told them to go home and left. 3.30. Naruto was pissed not only was Kakashi late, but his teammates were trying to get him to talk. Thankfully Kakashi arrived, only for the pink-haired Banshee to scream late. Sorry, but I nominated you three for the Chunin 3 only have a week to train, so good luck said Kakashi as he disappeared in a puff of smoke. Later losers I have to train. Said Naruto as he went towards the forest of death. It has been five days since Kakashi nominated Team 7 for the Chunin exams. And Naruto has been making the most of it. Every morning Naruto creates 200 shadow clones to do the water walking and tree climbing exercise, adds 15 pounds to his weights, runs 20 laps around the forest of death and Kanoha. 500 push-ups with a boulder on his back, 500 sit-ups, a new chakra control exercise where he balanced on a kunai with one finger by himself, and sword exercises using his clones. At noon Naruto meets Hade at Ichiraku Raymond, they eat lunch, without Naruto making him broke and train until night. 
and at night Naruto visits Ibuza and Haku for dinner, he talks to them about random stuff and asks for some tips on training. The next day was the same, only Naruto actually mastered Dance of the Crescent Moon, surprising Hayate and himself. Well Naruto cough you surprised me by cough, mastering this very cough complicated technique, I must cough say I'm impressed. Hayate said coughed. Hayate sensei I just practiced a lot. Naruto said sheepishly dot. Yay. Well enough of this, cough take the rest cough of the day off cough dot. Yes, Hayate sensei. Damn it it's only 3 o'clock o'clock what am I supposed to ow? Naruto and another person fell to the ground, but they both got up and Naruto saw the three people that would change his life forever. The first one was a heavily muscled male who was at least 17 and 6'3", with blue hair that went down to his waist and piercing green eyes. He wore a white shirt with the sleeves ripped off, with his forehead protector secured on his left bicep, along with baggy black pants. He also wore brown combat boots with iron greaves, but what startled him was he had heavy iron handcuffs around his wrists. The second one was a female who looked 17 as well and stood at 5'4", she had silky shoulder-length brown hair and brown eyes, she wore a white shirt with a blue snowflake covering her C-cup bust, and her forehead protector was tied around her neck. She wore black pants that held her kunai holster on her right leg and black shinobi sandals. She also wore what looked like a belt hanging loosely around her waist, was actually wire. The last person was a male who looked to be a year older than him with snow-white hair that went down to his back and was 5'7". He wore black combat boots along with black cargo pants with his kunai holster on his left leg. He also wore a black shirt and black gloves, all of this was partially covered with a snow-white cloak. He wielded a pitch black with a pitch black sheath, but the most surprising thing about this guy was that his eyes were covered with white medical tape and his forehead protector, and two scars were going down his cheeks where his eyes were supposed to be. I'm sorry I bumped into you. Said the girl. Hey it's no problem, I'm Naruto Uzumaki. Who are you guys? Asked Naruto. Azumarayashi. Said to the guy in the cuffs. The Kariyami said to the girl. Sanasuke. Said to the blind guy. Well from what your forehead protectors say you're from snow country am I correct? Yes, answered Kazuma. And you're here for the Chunin exams. That's right. Hikari replied. Well I wish you luck later. Naruto said and ran off. Tabuza's house. Naruto arrived at Tabuza's house earlier than expected, but it was okay with him and let him talk to Haku. After dinner Naruto went to talk to Haku alone and he surprised her. Um. Haku-chan I know we know each other for a short time, but I was wondering if I could take you on a date. Naruto asked with all the courage he could muster. Yes, I would love to watch Naruto-kun. Haku answered. Really? Oh I mean I'll pick you up at 7 tomorrow, later Haku-chan. Naruto said then left the house, he ran so fast it would make Guy cry. The Forest of Death. Naruto was in his house in the Forest of Death preparing his date with Haku. He was dressed smartly in loose black slacks, with a black sports jacket and an open-necked white shirt. Held in his right hand was a bouquet of red roses, all supplied by Shinigami. Am I'm so nervous, Shinigami-sensei do you have any advice? Naruto asked. Yeah don't screw up. Thanks a lot, what about you Kyuubi-sensei? You guys suck. Haku and Zabuza's house 7 o'clock. He began to sweat profusely when the front door opened to expel Haku. His breath hitched when he saw her. She was wearing a pink silk kimono. She had very little makeup on, just enough to accent what was already there. Her hair was down reaching past her shoulder blades like the day he met her in the woods. She smiled slightly when she saw him, so, what do you think? Uh. Uh. Well, damn. She giggled lightly. So I take it that you approve. Uh. Yes I do. Oh crap, I almost forgot, these are for you. He brought the flowers forward and noticed the way her eyes lit up when she saw them. She squealed, grabbing the flowers and holding them to herself. These are my favorites, how did you know? Uh. Lucky guess. After Haku put the flowers in some water, she grabbed Naruto's arm as he led her through the village. Soon, though, she began to get confused. Naruto was walking past all of the restaurants in the village, even his raiment stand. Um, Naruto-kun, where exactly are we going? Londi smiled mysteriously. You'll see. It's one of the places I like to go when I have a lot on my mind. After another five minutes, they entered a heavily wooded forest. The forest didn't last long, though, before breaking away to reveal the top of the Hokage Monument. Haku gasped. The sight was. Beautiful. The lights of Konoha, mixed in with the moon and stars of the sky, made the area seem so enchanting. Naruto gently led her to the edge of the cliff, where a picnic basket was waiting. Unfolding and spreading a blanket, he sat down next to Haku and handed her a plate. She smiled amusingly. So, dear sir, what would be on the menu tonight? Naruto smirked. 
Tonight we have beef kebabs, dango puddings, homemade stir-fry, fried and steamed rice, non-alcoholic wine, and for dessert, a chocolate cake. Remember Naruto was never an idiot. Aku gaped him, where on earth did you get all of this food? Naruto chuckled, well, I got everything but the wine from my own recipes. The wine I got was stolen from an old man named Hokage. You made all of this yourself? Haku asked. Well yeah. Even though I eat ramen a lot, I had to learn to cook at a young age in order to feed myself. Soon, though, I found myself enjoying it more and more, though I rarely get a chance to practice. He admitted. Unsure of the food, due to the boy's admitted negligence in practicing, Haku nonetheless grabbed a kebab and tentatively bit into it. Her eyes widened immediately. My good Kami. This is. Delicious. Naruto smiled, well, I'm glad you like it. I just hope the rest of my cooking gets the same review. She did, in fact, all of the food Naruto had made was gone fairly quickly. The blonde was amazed at the sheer amount Haku could eat while still maintaining her slim figure. When the food was done, Naruto summoned a few clones to pick up the mess while he led Haku by the arm and walked her to a pond. Naruto-kun why are we at this pond? Well Haku have you ever heard of ice skating? Yes, but why are we here? Haku asked. Simple, you use your bloodline to freeze the pond. Naruto replied. Still a little confused, Haku activated her bloodline and froze the pond. After she did, she asked how they were going to skate. Naruto just used the shadow clone jutsu and transformed them into skates. They skated for two hours, which they both liked very much. Then he led Haku by the arm and walked her to her house. Along the way, they made simple small talk before arriving at Haku's house. The girl looked fairly nervous as she turned to face Naruto. Thank you for a wonderful night, Naruto-kun. I've had the most fun ever in my entire life. Naruto grinned, glad to be of service ma'am. Haku rolled her eyes but had a slight smile on her lips. Well, I suppose I should head on in. But first, I'll need something from you. Eh? What could I have that you would need, Haku? Naruto asked. First of all, call me Haku-chan. And secondly, this. Before Naruto could react, she grabbed the back of his head and pulled him into a kiss. Naruto was shocked at first, but eventually gave in, his eyes closing as he deepened the kiss. Aku was bursting inside as she finally managed to kiss the boy she'd been admiring for quite a while now. She noted that he tasted slightly like Maizo Raymond, but that was okay with her. Naruto, on the other hand, found that Haku tasted like a vanilla, one which he was unable to place. He didn't let it deter him, though. He just figured that he would have to get more practice until he was able to figure out what the taste was. Judging from his date's reaction so far, he didn't think she would mind. After a minute or two, the two broke away, gasping for air. Naruto, as usual, was the first to recover. Wow, that was great. Aku, her face flushed, giggled, I'm glad you liked it, Naruto-kun. However, I have to get to bed. But I tell you what, I'll let you practice some more tomorrow, okay? Naruto nodded eagerly, before kissing her on the cheek and heading off with a rather loud and enthusiastic goodbye. But what he did not know was that Tsubuza was watching. Naruto's house. Am Kit, I didn't think you had it in you. An astonished Kaiubi said. Neither did I. Well now that you have Haku's heart, you now need to focus on that Hayuga girl. You've been neglecting her lately. Shinigami said in a big brother tone. Wow way to minute Shinigami sensei, how can I date two girls? It wouldn't seem fair to both of them. You see Naruto. You undoubtedly know that you are almost the last of your clan. Because of this it is a requirement that you practice polygamy. Said Shinigami. Naruto raised an eyebrow in question. I can see you don't understand. What it means is. You are to take on multiple wives. Naruto blinked a couple of times as this was said. What? You can have both of them, you idiot. I'm going to bed. It was the day of the Chunin exams, and Naruto couldn't be any happier because he would finally show everyone what he's made of. Theme 7 arrived at the building and started to walk to room 301 until... Naruto heard people shouting and walked up to see some unimportant genin team shouting at some chunin to let them through to 301. Sakura was about to tell them that they're only on floor 201, but Naruto put his hand in front of her. Sakura looked at Naruto confused, sighing as Naruto answered her. It's a test to weed out weak genin, we'd be fighting useless battles if they were here. Sakura didn't say anything he knew that she understood. Fifteen minutes later most of the teams had left. Signaling to Sasuke and Sakura, Naruto walked over to the two Chunin and pushed them aside, ignoring their threats of battle. He kept walking even when he heard them charge, they both leaped into the air intent on punishing him for pushing them aside. Naruto stopped but stood there with his hands in the pocket of his trench coat. They were about to hit him when a bandaged hand came out and caught both of their legs. Bushy brows appeared out of nowhere and stopped their attacks. Not wanting or caring about what happened next, Naruto just walked away. 
Sasuke gets his ass beat by Lee. I'm not writing the scene because it scared the crap out of me. Naruto waited for 15 minutes until the door opened as Sasuke and Sakura with Sasuke complaining about getting his ass kicked. Ignoring this Naruto walked in and saw that there must have been a hundred or more people there to take the exams. And he saw that they were all staring at him. What the fuck y'all looking at? Naruto asked. Most of them kept staring, but some of them turned away. Hey Naruto shut up will ya? Naruto inwardly groaned when he turned around and saw Team 8 and Team 10 standing there. Before he could reply, Ino grabbed Sasuke's arm and started talking to him, Sakura interfered, and she and Ino started bickering over who was Sasuke's girlfriend, Shikamaru was was muttering something about troublesome girls, and Chouji and Shino were arguing about a dumb bug on the floor. Then Naruto was hitting on Hinata who was blushing redder than a tomato, even though they dated before. Then some boy that was much older than them told them to pipe down, because they already had quite an impression. Hearing this, the rookie 9 minus Naruto looked around to see that everyone was staring at them. The boy then said that his name was Kabuto and that they didn't want to get on anyone's bad side. Kabuto then said that he'd taken the exam seven times, so he knew how bad it was because everyone was on edge. A few minutes later Kabuto pulled out a deck of cards and told the rookie nine that he had info on hundreds of ninjas. Sasuke who was closest to him asked if Kabuto would show him info on some ninjas. Naruto was barely listening, but he heard the names of the ninjas that Sasuke wanted to know about. Sasuke was excited that he would get the stats and skills of the ninjas that he would beat. There's Rock Lee of the Leaf, Gara of the Sand, and Naruto Uzumaki of the Leaf. He said. When Sasuke said those names, Naruto almost exploded because of Sasuke's ego. Hey Sasuke, I don't know why you want to get info on me or Gara, because we don't give a rat's ass about you. Besides I'm on your team, what could you possibly want to know about me that you don't already know? Stop being so nosy. Instantly Sakura and Ino ran over to him and started shouting at him to apologize to Sasuke right now. Sasuke on the other hand tried to keep his cool but was failing. So he decided to ignore everyone except Kabuto. Kabuto flipped his hands through the stack of cards, coming up with three. Let's see Gara of the Sand. Eight C-ranked missions. Hm even one B-ranked mission. I don't have much else on him, just that he has returned from every mission without a scratch. The Genins looked up and around till they spotted Gara, who was sitting between Tamari and Kankuro. Sasuke looked back at Kabuto. What about the others? He asked. Rock Lee is a year older than you guys. Mission history. 20 D rank, 11 C rank. His sensei is Gai Mido. His Tejutsu has improved greatly in this year, the rest is nothing impressive. This is his first exam with his teammates, Niji Hayuga and Tenten. What about the dope? Kiba asked. Hmm. Let's see, Naruto Uzumaki he's the dead last of the class. Mission history. 7 D rank, 1 C rank, 1 B rank, and 1 A rank. His skills is suck, the only thing that changed about him was his clothes. Sasuke and Sakura knew about the D, C, and A ranked missions, because they were there. However they didn't know about the B ranked mission, and demanded to know when he did it. That must have been when I beat Mizuki defected from the village. Didn't think the old man would make it a B ranked mission. He explained. Before anyone could say he was lying, smoke appeared, and a voice yelled out. Alright maggots listen up. Suddenly a man appeared wearing a standard Jounin uniform, but with a black trench coat covering it up. He also had a bandana covering his head. My name is Ibiki Marino, and I'll be your protector for the first exam, which is a written one for those who don't know. Now everyone please elect a number and then go inside the room and sit at the designated seat. Ten minutes later everyone had a number and was seated. Naruto was so busy thinking about the test that he didn't notice someone sitting down beside him. Hey, Naruto-kun. The person said. Naruto looked over at the person sitting beside him and said. Hinata, how have you been? She smiled at him nervously. I'm G good HHO about why you? Naruto smiled back at her, I'm fine, so what do you think about this exam? Hinata thought about his question before answering, I I think it LLB Isai. Naruto laughed, yeah you're right, these weaklings can't stand against us. Thanks, and Naruto-kun. Hinata thought with a blush. Both of them kept talking, completely ignoring everyone's stares and complaints that they couldn't hear the proctor explain the rules. When one of them did complain Naruto told him to shut the fuck up, gave him the one finger salute, and gave him a small dose of killing intent that only he could feel. Five minutes later they were whispering to each other despite the fact that they were taking the test. Naruto was holding Hinata's hand under the table while he got the answers from Kaiubi. Hinata and Niji used their bakugan using a minor to cover their veins. Sasuke used his Sharingan and copied from a Chunin disguised as a Genin. Sakura used her oversized brain to get the answers, then Ino used her mind transfer jutsu on her, then used it on her teammates and gave them the answers she stole from Sakura. Shino gathered information using a bee. Ari used his sand to create the third eye. 
The sound gen and used sound vibrations from the taping of the pencils. Piba used Akamaru in some way. How the hell could they get away with that, especially in their own village who know what the Inuzuka can do with their dogs? Tintin used mirrors how the hell did she not get caught? They were in plain view how could they not see that? To give the answers to Lee. Venkuro used his puppet crow to take him to the bathroom and later gave his answers to Tamari. And the snow nins used their test to the 45 minute mark. According to the paper, that was the time that Ibiki gave out the 10th question. Eyes flickered from the paper to the scowling instructor as they waited for him to begin talking. So, Ibiki said it seems that we have some regular bookworms here. Or, some very good cheaters. At that, almost the entire room flinched. The exception was Sakura, who was thinking I wonder who was dumb enough to cheat. So now it's time for the 10th question. But first, another rule. At that, the genin stiffened. You must choose whether to accept or reject this question. If you choose to reject this question, you will instantly lose all points and you and your team will fail immediately. Damari spoke out. But then what's the point? Why would anyone actually reject the question? The sadistic grin crossed Ibiki's features as he said because of what happens when you take the question and get it wrong. If you do, then. You will never be allowed to test for Chunin again and will be a genin for the rest of your life. Almost everyone in the room began sputtering. B but we know there are people here who have taken the test lots of times and they got to the second or third round. Ino shouted out. Another sadistic smirk passed the torturer's face. It sucks for you guys that this is my first year as a proctor. One stupid genin raised his hand to quit, then a lot of people started quieting, and this went on for two minutes until they stopped. For all those remaining. You pass. Ibiki shouted. The exclamation was met with looks of shock, indignation, and in Naruto's case, amusement. The scarred proctor went on to list reasons extremely similar to inner Naruto's reasoning. Congratulations. Ibiki said, as he counted down mentally. Three, two, one, now. As he thought now, the windows in the back of the room shattered and a black ball rolled through. It extended out into a banner at the front of the room, reading Anko Mitarashi Second Examiner. And that's exactly who stood in the center, a woman with purple hair and gray eyes she was wearing a skin-tight fishnet and an orange miniskirt. Okay maggots. I'm your second proctor, Anko Mitarashi and now. She said, all the genin leaning forward in anticipation, it's time for a headcount. A crash of furniture and a number of grunts met that announcement, as almost all of the genin fell face first on the floor. Ibiki, you passed 26 three-man squads. You're losing your touch. Despite the fact he had thought that only five minutes before, Ibiki shook his head. We've got quite a few outstanding candidates this year. Bullshit. She screamed. I'll cut these guys in half by the next exam. Midgets. Follow me. Anko jumped out of the window, with all of the genin following her. All right everyone, follow me to the second part of the exam. Anko shouted. Fifteen minutes later everyone was in front of training ground 44. Anko decided to tell them that the real name of this forest was the Forest of Death. Naruto scoffed, who cares he muttered to no one in particular. Anko, hearing this through a kunai at him, Naruto could have dodged it but decided to let it graze his cheek. Anko popped up behind him and licked the blood off his face. She thought that he'd be scared, but actually he was smiling. You like this don't you Naruto? When he didn't say anything she licked his cheek again this time real slow. What's wrong with Naruto? Naruto decided to answer her question. Actually I was just going to warn you that you might have AIDS. When she looked confused he sighed before continuing. Oh come on you've licked like a hundred people's blood and it's in your system, how do you know that one of those people didn't have AIDS? Anko didn't say anything, she was shocked she hadn't even thought about it. Anko decided that after the genins went into the forest she'd go get a blood test. Haha you have AIDS guess who says that. After that little incident, Anko gave them some sheets telling them to sign them so Kanoha won't be responsible for their deaths. Exam room. After Anko left, Ibiki Marino glanced at the broken glass, his comrade's entrance scattered across the floor and grimaced. That woman's going to be the death of me. He mused. The number of examinees who passed the written exams was greater than the previous year, almost double. Hopefully the numbers will have dwindled by the time the one-on-one -on -one matches begin. The examiner took a cursory glance at the answer sheets he held in his hands and out of boredom, decided to read some of them. Most of the questions in almost all of the papers were left unanswered, with a few exceptions. The Haruno girl he was hearing so much about had full marks, which wasn't really a surprise, because her academics had always been good. The Ichiha's paper had handwriting identical to one of the Chunin proctors who sat among the class. Ibiki glanced among the remaining batches of tests until his eyes came upon one name. Naruto Uzumaki. He read. From what the examiner remembered, that was the name of the boy who held the Kaiubi inside of him. He decided to read his answers. 
The scar Jianan's eyes widened as he read the answers. And reread them again. And again. They had answered every single question correctly, but there was something about the way that he worded them that made the answers seem suspect. It took him a few minutes to realize that the boy's answers on some of the more technical questions were actually better and more plausible than what was written on the official correction sheet. Ibiki was very impressed. Hamisama. He said. He made a mental note to see Naruto's match, if only to see how the boy would fare. Grinning like a cat that caught a mouse, he hefted the answer sheets in one palm and walked out the room, whistling as he went. The Forest of Death. It has been a half hour since Team 7 arrived in the Forest of Death. And they were lost except Naruto until he stopped them. What is it done? Sasuke asked. Listen Team Bastard for a guy, bitch for a girl I'm going to give you the scroll and we'll split up. Why would we do that? Because of Sakura, if we split into two groups we will find an earth scroll quicker. Replied Naruto. Idiots like I would give you the real scroll. Like I would do. That is a good idea for Adobe. Interrupted Sasuke as he took the scroll from Naruto. Yay what Sasuke-kun said. Sakura quickly agreed. Okay, here's the plan. You and the temple will go to the left, when you see a cross, stop and go right to avoid the man-eating plants. Stay away from the caves that's where the wolves are, and there is a tiger pit, so stay off the ground after you pass the caves. We'll meet up here in case you find anything. Naruto said to them. Naruto, how do you know this? Asked Sakura. I live here. He replied before running off, not noticing their shocked faces. After Naruto left, he encountered five tigers, but quickly killed them and sealed them into a scroll. Shinigami told him the tattoo appeared after he killed a human, animals and clones don't count. After his battle with the tigers he ran into the grass nins, hearing their conversation. And then I will give Sasuke Kun my curse seal, and he will come to me for power. Said he she grass nin. This is a great plan for Orochimaru sama Replied one of the grass nins. Orochimaru. I'm going to kill him. No, Naruto doesn't attack him. Shinigami yelled. Why? Your orders are for me to kill him. He yelled. You're not strong enough. What? Did you're at least high Chunin level, and he's a Sanin, they are as strong as the Hokage himself. Think before you act Dumbus. Before Naruto reflected his thoughts, he heard Orochimaru speak again. I see we have an intruder, you two kill him. Orochimaru said to his minions. Oh shit. Naruto stood and faced the grass nin drawing his katana, settling once again into his previous stance. The grass nin gave Naruto a sneer. I can see that you were killed, I can see it in your eyes. When it comes time for me to deliver your death blow, I'll make sure to give you the same courtesy. Naruto activated his Karashigan then the darkness flame swirled around Naruto. Knocking his hood off and smoke rising from his mask, making him look like Shinigami himself. That. Kid. What. What are you? The man asked in fear. Instead of answering Naruto rushed at him, but the grass nin was ready. Their swords clashed together, sparking a blazing fire in the area. The nin jumped away, pulled out a few shuriken, threw it at Naruto, did some hand seals, and shouted shadow shuriken jutsu. Making three shuriken into sixty. But Naruto was ready and shouted dance of the crescent moon. Creating three shadow clones and their swords extended, destroying twenty-five, with the others missing him. Now it's my turn shadow shuriken jutsu. Naruto shouted sheathing his sword, he threw five shuriken and turned them into five hundred. Shocking the grass nin. The grass nin shook out of his confusion, put his hands on the ground saying, earth style. Earth flip jutsu. A huge slab of earth rose from the ground, the whole earth wall got filled with shuriken, while the rest got stuck into the trees. Damn it. How did it go? You learn. My daughter Yuan. Ichiha asked the panting grass nin. I'm no Ichiha. Naruto spat venomously. Really? Well it doesn't matter, now die. He said drawing his katana. Naruto's sword clashed with the grass nins and produced a few more sparks. Pivoting on his heel, he twirled clockwise around the man, crouching in the process. Using the momentum of his twirl, he brought his sword in a low arc across the man's kneecaps. The nin jumped and did an axe kick to Naruto's head stunning him, he then slashed in a horizontal arc cutting from his chest to his hip. He then did some hand seals and shouted, Earth style. Mud dragon bomb. True to form, the man slammed his hands down on the ground and seemed to grasp at the earth. The shape of a dragon's head rose out of the ground and spat a lot of mud balls at Naruto. Naruto quickly recovered and did some hand seals, inhaled and yelled out, fire style fireball jutsu. Shooting out a fireball the size of his house, the two jutsu slammed into each other, causing a massive amount of smoke and dust, obscuring everyone's vision. Except Naruto with his Karashigan activated, he could see through the dust and charged at the grass nin who was trying to find his way out of the dust. Unluckily for him, it was too late. Naruto's blade slammed into him, cutting him deeply across his chest. 
the force of the strike blew the nin into a tree, where he grimaced in pain and slumped over, clutching his chest. Naruto sighed slightly and began to walk over towards the grass nin, readying himself to give the final blow. Standing only a few meters in front of the heavily injured grass nin, Naruto knelt down and brought his katana in front of him. You're good. Kid. Never seen a shinobi like you. I can. The man coughed a few times, splattering blood onto the ground. Wiping his mouth, he heaved in a deep breath. Dot I can definitely see why I lost. Heh. Imagine. Me, losing to a kid. It's disgraceful. Naruto sighed and stood, bringing his hands into a cross grip on his katana, in a typical beheading stance. Naruto. My name's Naruto Namikaze. You asked earlier. And I figure that you should at least know the name of the person who killed you. The grass nin looked up with a chagrined smile. Yeah. Kid. Listen. Make a name for yourself. That way. When I tell everyone down in hell. He let forth another rattling cough, holding his chest area. The man breathed a deep sigh again and looked up with an almost pleading expression. Dot when I tell everyone in hell. Who killed me, at. At least they will. Know that I died. From someone powerful, and. Not some. Dumbass. The stiff wind blew through the clearing, stirring up a few leaves and ruffling Naruto's blonde and black hair. Yeah. I will do that. Before I kill you, I would like to know your name. The man coughed again, but said dot my name. Is. Raiden. Mizuno. Of the. Sound. Naruto then swept his katana in a diagonal arc across the man's neck, separating his head from his torso. The man's body slumped to the side, and his head hit the ground with a small thump. For a moment, everyone present was silent. Naruto released his cross grip on his katana and let his sword hand rest loosely at his side. Naruto thought, with a grimace. That if any kill should be considered his first. It was this one. This was his first true shinobi kill. He had pitted his life against another man's life in mortal combat and came out on top. In the shinobi world. The one who lost was dead and the one who won lived. The strong survived, the weak died. That was how shinobi lived. As much as Naruto hated to admit it, this was the shinobi way. He sighed and took out a rag, cleaning it of any detritus, before sheathing it on his waist. Clap clap clap. Naruto turned around looking at the other grass now turned sound nin, clapping for him. I must say, I'm quite impressed he was one of our best swordsmen. Anyways Orochimaru is always looking for new recruits, why don't join us? If not, Kimimuro Kagaya will be your executioner said the sound nin. Kimimuro was 5'8 with long white hair, green eyes with red mascara under his eyes, which is very weird, and he had red dots over his eyebrows. He wore a baggy white yukata, black cargo pants, black shinobi sandals, and had that weird purple belt. I would never join that pedophile. Besides if I do join he would kill me after I'm all used up. Just like you. Replied Naruto. Orochimaru-sama would never abandon me. He then pulled out a bone sword and charged into battle against Naruto. But Sasuke and Sakura. Kukikuku. Such fire in those eyes, the androgynous grass nin hissed, you really are Itachi's little brother. How do you know that name? Sasuke shouted. The grass nin smiled unnaturally wide and shot him. Tongue at Sasuke. The tongue hit the ground that Sasuke had been standing moments before and produced a crater as he jumped onto a branch. Sharingan. Sasuke muttered as his eyes turned red and a comma formed in each eye. The grass nin smiled wider and said, Sasuke-kun do you want the power to kill your brother? To be the best. I know you do little boy, the ninja cooed as he licked his lips. Man he's really gay, am I right everybody? Sauce growled knowing it was true as he took out a demon wind shuriken and threw it at the ninja. The grass nin laughed as the shuriken flew past him, but stopped when the wire attached to the shuriken bound him to the tree triple windmill shuriken. Sosk said as he started making hand seals and shouted, fire style. Dragon flame jutsu. As he blew a plume of fire that turned into a dragon made of fire out of his mouth. The fire followed the wires and incinerated the tree. Creepily, after being hit by three streams of flames, the grass nin was unharmed after shedding. Snake skin. He did have a tear in his face though. The ninja laughed creepily and tore the rest of his face off, leaving. Um. A very gay looking guy. Sosk twitched and asked the figure. Who are you? Instead of answering, the freak decided to take a bite out of him literally. Now his whole body felt like one big welt and it wasn't helping that he was suffering from chakra drain due to using two of his most powerful muscles in quick succession. Hukikuku. Not bad Sasuke-kun, the perverted nin complimented in a disgustingly feminine manner, I'll be seeing you later. He stated, though of course, I doubt there'll be much need for concern. What did you do to Sasuke-kun you freak? Sakura yelled, wincing as the Sanin hurled an annoyed look her way. Really, such rude words. What are they teaching young women these days? 
Arachimaru muttered, before disappearing from view and delivering a fierce backhand to the girl's skull, though judging from your pitiful skills. I really shouldn't be that surprised. My name is Arachimaru, and Sasuke-kun will come to me. He said as he disappeared into the ground. Back with Naruto. Naruto and Kimimura were both panting, they both had some wounds, but nothing too serious, he was also taunting Kimimura, saying that Arachimaru abandoned him. Arachimaru-sama would never leave me. He cares about me. No he doesn't, he is just using you like he did to that man. Once he's done with you he will get rid of you. Liar. Kimimura then suddenly fell to his knees and started to cough up blood. Not now, not here. Naruto slowly walked up to him. It's some sort of disease isn't it? Kimimura was shocked. How do you know? I can sense it, you don't have much longer until it completely kills you. Arachimaru will. Will what cure you? He can't find a known cure for what you have. And if there was he would just steal your body after you were cured, he is just using you as a tool. Naruto could see that he was thinking over everything carefully. But I can change that. Naruto quickly formed some seals. Ninja art. Feigning sleek jutsu. Naruto's palm contacted Kimimuro's forehead, knocking him out cold. Naruto walked up and stood above the sleeping figure of Kimimuro and took him to his house. After Naruto knocked Kimimuro out he decided to take him home. He was almost home, but then he heard a familiar scream. Shit Hinata is in trouble. Oh man I don't have time for this summoning he shouted. In a big poof of smoke, a brown fox the size of a horse appeared. How may I serve you Naruto-sama? Henji, I need you to take Kimimuro to my house. And I need you to tell him to make himself at home. Yes, Naruto-sama. Naruto put Kimimuro on Kenji's back, then he went to save Hinata. A few minutes away Gara looked manically at teammate, his sand poured out of his gourd and wrapped it around Hinata. Sand coffin. He yelled. He was about to do sand burial, but his sand was cut in half by Naruto's katana. Gara leaves Hinata alone. Naruto said calmly, while producing a huge amount of killing intent. This of course scared Tamari, Kankuro, and teammate. While Gara produced his own killing intent. After 15 minutes both Naruto and Gara quit and the sand team left. Naruto turned around to face teammate, only to see Kiba out cold, Shino just standing there, and Hinata on her knees in tears. He quickly kneeled down to her level, gave her a hug saying, it's okay Hinata-chan, I'll always protect you, no matter what. Then Naruto-kun thank you for saving me. She said. Naruto's only response was taking off his mask, making Hinata blush 20 shades of red, kissing her on the forehead, and making her faint. This made Naruto sigh no matter what he did she still fainted, he really needed to get her out of the Hyuga compound. Please take Hinata-chan and the mutt to the tower. Naruto said. I will. Shino replied taking his teammates and going somewhere safe. Naruto's home. After the incident with Gara, Naruto went to his house, only to see Kimimuro eating his ramen and petting Ami. Ami seems to take a liking to you, she's not too friendly with strangers. At this Ami perked up and jumped onto Naruto's shoulder. Your summon told me to make myself at home. Kimimuro said. Yay, now onto business, I can help you, but I need information on Arachimaru. After a few hours Kimimuro told Naruto about the curse seals, the sound 4, after saying he quit it was the sound 5, the plan to destroy Konoha and use Sasuke Ichiha as his new vessel. He also told him where he came from, how he met Arachimaru, saying he was the last of his clan, and saying his bloodline limit was the dead bone pulse. After he finished Naruto told him about his deal with Shinigami, his new bloodline limit, the Kaiubi being inside him when he transferred him into his sword and his childhood. They then knew they were not so different and got along like brothers. Then they both went to bed after a long day. The next day Naruto decided to talk with Ami. So Ami, how have you been? Naruto asked. Lonely? She replied. I'm sorry sweetheart I've been very busy training to protect you and getting you a new mommy. Really? Yea I have a clan to revive after all. They pretty much did this the entire day and Kamimuro slept because of his illness. The next day Kaiubi talked to him. Hey kid aren't you forgetting something? Kaiubi asked. Yea I forgot to eat breakfast. No, it rhymes with him even. Nope doesn't ring a bell. You dumbass it's team 7 they're in trouble. Kaiubi yelled. Oh shit I forgot about them. Daddy what's wrong? Ami asked. Ami daddy has something important to do, I'll see you later bye. Naruto said before running towards his teammate's chakra signature. With Sakura. I got some parts from the manga and I'm and guidelines the rest is me. Ha. You can barely move, what makes you think you can keep me from killing Sasuke? Zaku taunted. Say your prayers bitch. As he was ready to finish her off, three others appeared in front of Sakura. Under other circumstances, Sakura would hate who had come to her rescue, but at this point she couldn't have been happier. Ino. I just couldn't let you have all the fun, replied Ino. 
besides, I can't just let you win over Sasuke-kun by letting you play the heroine. They are like cockroaches. Dosu commented. Just what the hell were you two thinking, just interfering in a fight like this? Chaoji yelled at Shikamaru and Ino. Troublesome as it is. It's even more troublesome if we don't help them out. Shikamaru said lazily. Since Ino decided to step in, we, as men, just can't run away. Besides, we are a three-man team. There isn't anything we can't do together. Ino replied. Be but. I'm not ready to die just yet. Chaoji pleaded as he tried to get away, only to be held in place by Shikamaru. Shut up. We can't help that now. Shouted Shikamaru. Zaku laughed at the big bone guy's actions. Go ahead and run if you'd like, fatty. Never call an Akamichi fat, you regret it. Both Ino and Shikamaru gasped and took a step back, the latter instantly letting go of Chaoji's scarf, as if he had been burned. Chaoji, on the other hand, stopped trying to run. What did he say? Chaoji asked in a menacing low whisper. I'm not sure I heard him correctly. I said you can go and run, fat ass. Zaku shouted. I'm not fat. I'm big boned. Chaoji shouted, turning around abruptly. Now it's a fight for honor of Kanoha and big boned people everywhere. Who are Ragi for big boned people? Ino smirked, now you made him mad. Troublesome. Shikamaru said, shaking his head. Sakura Ino said suddenly. Take care of those Sasuke Kunal right. The Ino Shikachao team is going to fight with everything we have. Ninja art. Expansion Jutsu. Chaoji shouted as he ballooned out to an incredible size. Human boulder. Chaoji's limbs and head receded into the big bone guy's body as jets of steam streamed out from where each appendage disappeared to. He then began to spin at a very rapid velocity. What the hell? Zaku said placing his hands out in front of him. Splicing air waves. He shouted. Streams of air slamming straight into Chaoji's huge body. They were at a standstill until Zaku got frustrated and put more power into his. Chaoji then shot up into the air only to start rapidly descending on the spiky-haired sound nin. Shit. Because of his spinning it is ineffective. Osu saw Zaku's predicament and ran to save his partner. Shikamaru decided to step in at this point. I don't think so. Shadow Possession Jutsu. Nara's shadow launched out to capture Sound Nin's shadow, holding him in place. Shadow Possession Jutsu success. Meanwhile, Zaku was just barely able to dodge Chaoji's attack. Osu? What the hell are you doing? Kin shouted when she saw him not doing anything. Ino, take care of the woman. Shikamaru ordered. No problem, Shikamaru replied Ino, just take care of my body. Mind transfer jutsu. Shikamaru caught Ino as she slumped to the ground. Chaoji had Zaku boxed in with no escape in sight. Kin. What are you doing? Zaku shouted. What's wrong? Dosu asked. Kin Ino then held a kunai to her throat. This is it. If you move, she's dead. Unless you want us to do lasting harm to you guys, you'd better drop your scroll and go. She ordered them. Once we feel that you are a good distance away, we'll then release her. Zaku's response was to attack his teammate. Chaoji. Shouted Kin Ino. Toji intercepted the attack taking the brunt of the damage, but Kin was sent flying back into the tree behind her. Ino's body started bleeding. Ino. Shikamaru shouted. Chaoji had returned to his normal size, his attack expired, and he was in no condition to continue the fight. What the hell? They attacked their own teammate. Kin Ino said as she got up. You took us far too lightly, Zaku said, smirking. Our purpose is not some dumb scroll or to even make it through the exam. Dosu added. It's Sasuke kun Shikamaru's shadow then receded back to him, releasing Dosu. Ah, I see you have a set time limit, observed the newly freed Dosu. And the girls. Judging from the blood, if we kill Kin, she dies as well. You would kill your own teammate? Shikamaru asked, surprised. If we have to, said Zaku raising his hand towards Kin. I have to admit though. You almost had us. However, you let your guard down. Dosu informed them. Disgusting. Said another voice, Sakura looked up to see a cut and bruised Naruto, along with Niji Hayuga and Tenten. And what are you going to do? Kill us? Ha 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 ha. Zaku mocked. Niji smirked, it looks like we no longer have to. That's when everyone else felt it. A sickly powerful aura saturated the air around them as Sasuke was doused in purple chakra. He abruptly stood up. Sasuke-kun. You're awake. Sakura said excitedly before becoming afraid. As Sasuke slowly stood the purple chakra swirled around him. Dh that's. Sasuke. Kun. Said Kinino, afraid of what had become of her longtime crush. Blame-like markings now ran down the Ichiha's left arm and the left side of his face. Sakura. Who did that to you? The cursed seal. Dosu and Naruto gasped. Sasuke-kun. Those markings. Sakura began before being interrupted by Sasuke. Don't worry, I can feel the power surging inside of me. 
Sasuke said confidently. I'm stronger than I was before, and it's all because of him. I'm an Avenger, I will gain power by any means necessary, even at the cost of my own soul. I see. Dosu observed, the markings she mentioned earlier was Arachimaru Sama's own cursed seal. I can't believe he was able to survive. Who, Sakura. Who did this to you? Sasuke demanded angrily. I did. Zaku said proudly. Sasuke turned his gaze towards the sound nin, his now two Tomo Sharingan spinning wildly. Ino get out of there. Shikamaru shouted. The blonde Kanoichi immediately complied as Kin's body slumped to the ground. Chaoji hide, now. Shikamaru, what's going on? Chaoji asked. I don't know. He answered. Sasuke's markings spread to cover his entire body. This is too much for us, we must leave now. Said Dosu to Zaku. Whatever. He was half dead just a few minutes ago. Said Zaku, aiming his arms at Sasuke. Zaku stop. You don't understand. I will kill them all. Shouted Zaku, ultrasonic airwaves. Everyone had to cover their faces as Zaku struck Sasuke. Blown to pieces. Who was? Asked someone from behind Zaku. His eyes widened in realization as he was knocked off his feet across the clearing. Zaku? Shouted Dosu, but Sasuke was already attacking again. Fire style. Phoenix flower jutsu. Several fireballs were streaming at Zaku. Too easy. Splicing airwave. He shouted, overpowering the fireballs. Unfortunately for him, there were shuriken within the fireballs, and Zaku found himself getting sliced up pretty good, though he wasn't struck in any vital area. Before anyone could say or do anything Zaku found himself doubled over, Sasuke's foot in the center of his back, his arms held fast behind him, by the Acha. This can't be Sasuke-kun. Ino said in denial. What's happened to him? Asked Chaoji. Sasuke smirked, you seem awfully proud of these arms. He began to apply pressure, and the bones in Zaku's arms began to crack and break. A stop. Stop it please. Zaku yelled out in pain. Sasuke began to pull harder until there were two loud snaps of Sasuke crippling Zaku's arms. Sasuke then kicked Zaku down to the ground like common trash before turning towards Dosu. I guess it's only you left. You had better be much more entertainment than the other guy. Sasuke said, still smirking sinisterly at the shaking Dosu. Sasuke-kun. Stop. Sakura finally yelled out embracing the Achiha in a full hug, tears streaming down her face. Stop, please. But her efforts were in vain, because Sasuke backhanded her in the face. All right, that's enough. Naruto shouted. So the dobe wants a piece of me, well then bring it on. Naruto ran at Sasuke only to get punched in the stomach, Naruto then swiped at Sasuke's legs knocking him down. He then got to his feet and shouted Shadow Clone Jutsu. Creating 10 clones. One of his clones went to punch Sasuke, only to get punched in the chest, poofing out of existence. Sasuke then took out five kunai and shuriken, he threw them, taking out five clones and hitting the real Naruto. Crying out in pain, Naruto took three shuriken out of his left leg and took a kunai out of his left hand. Ignoring the pain he ran at Sasuke. After finishing off the last clone, Sasuke kicked Naruto in his right knee, then he elbowed him in between the shoulders, with that Sasuke knocked Naruto into the air with a solid kick to the chin and then jumped after him. Then appeared behind and delivered a stunning backhand strike to the face. He wasn't finished with that thought as he punched Naruto in the stomach, followed by a devastating spin around kick to the chest. Sasuke called out to the lion's barrage. As he finished the attack. Knocking Naruto's mask off and breaking a lot of his bones. Everyone who was not unconscious couldn't believe what they were seeing. Sasuke Ichiha was killing his teammate and not showing any kind of mercy. So done, what do you think of my newfound power? Naruto didn't answer. Can't speak, oh well I guess I'm the better shinobi. Naruto still didn't answer. But this power, I can kill that ice bitch. He didn't get a chance to finish when Naruto punched him in the jaw and sent him into a tree. His chakra was intense, everybody minus Sasuke fell unconscious, his chakra was so intense it even scared Shinigami. Naruto stops. If you don't stop the Jagan I will. Oh shit it's too late. Shinigami yelled. Naruto stood up his medical tape around his lower torso and left arm burned off, his wounds were already healing, leaving some scars, Naruto's spiky blonde hair began to stand straight up in the front, no longer covering his forehead. His eyes turned into the Karashigan, but a fifth Tomo appeared, his nails grew longer into claws, and his whiskers became thicker. Then what appeared to be a slit across it appeared and began to slightly glow. The teal glow became more intense as it got wider. When the slit fully opened the glow subsided, revealing a third eye much like Naruto's normal too. It was crimson in color, although it was slightly slitted. I will not allow you to hurt Haku, I'm gonna kill you. Naruto shouted in a demonic voice. Naruto rushed Sasuke punching him in the stomach, he then ricochet off a tree, then kicked in the back of the leg. 
After that he did the shadow clone jutsu without any hand seals. He created five clones, one punched Sasuke in the face, Yuzu the other four kicked him in the chin, and other body parts ma. Then Naruto jumped on the first clone's back, getting higher than Sasuke, Kai he then gave him an axe kick in the back of the head, finishing the move Uzumaki Barrage. Knocking Sasuke out. After three hours Naruto fixed himself up by putting new medical tape around his lower torso and around the lower part of his left arm and hand, he put his forehead protector over his Jagan eye, he put his mask on, and he carved the leaf symbol on the forehead on his mask. While everyone was out he wondered what the hell happened. The first minute Sasuke called Haku an ice bitch, and the next second his Karashigan felt weird, knows a new technique, he had an eye on his forehead, and everybody was unconscious. He tried to contact Shinigami and Kaiubi, but they weren't answering. So after another hour of pondering everyone minus Sasuke and Zaku woke up. You're strong, we cannot defeat you. Dosu said, their teams are now in his hands as he had taken in back from Zaku. How about you just let us go? For now. He said putting down the scroll slowly. I must check on some things first, but I promise you, should we face each other once more, I promise we will neither run nor hide. Wait. What has Arachimaru done to Sasuke-kun? Sakura demanded. And why Sasuke-kun? I do not know, we were ordered to kill him. Said Dosu, who then left with his teammates. After that Team 10 and Team 9 guys team left, leaving Naruto alone, because Sakura collapsed from exhaustion. Right now I have to carry their sorry ass, oh well Shadow Clone Jutsu. He shouted. He picked up Sasuke, and his clone picked up Sakura and went towards the tower. When Sasuke woke up, it was to find Naruto carrying him over his shoulder like a sack of potatoes. Another Naruto, running next to them, had Sakura in a similar position. You awake, sleeping beauty. He heard the blonde ask, causing him to moan in reply as his head spun. I feel like shit. He muttered honestly, feeling a bile rise in his mouth from those few words. You puke on me, and I'll castrate you with your teeth. Naruto threatened. When the clone felt Sakura move and moan he accidentally hit her head off a branch, rendering the Kinoichi unconscious once more. As a result, the trip was relatively quiet until they got to the tower, where the irate Kinoichi finally regained consciousness and would have made a scene if Sasuke did not tell her to shut it. The tower. As it was, they were trying to figure out the connection between the scrolls and the tapestry when Sasuke noticed the smoke rising off the center, slapping them to the floor, causing a figure to appear in a cloud of smoke. Aruka sensei nice to see you again. Naruto said. Good to see you made it this far, the scarred man noted. You have one more day in the exams, why don't you rest? Naruto nodded, then he glanced at Sasuke. Did you get a medic nin? He asked. Some snake freak attacked Sasuke in the woods, he's got this freaky hickey on his neck. Plus he's really beat up. Sasuke snorted and showed the mark to the worried Chunin, who agreed to have a medic sent in immediately. In the meantime, Naruto decided to catch up on his time with Hinata. Sakura glared at the blonde whom she blamed for stealing her precious time with Sasuke. It was the day of the preliminaries, the teams who made it were Team 7, Team 8, Team 9, and Team 10, the Sand Nins, Snow Nins, and Sound Nins. Not Kabutos, Arachimaru made him and his team drop out of the exam. There were also some onlookers the Genin knew like the Sadame, Kakashi, Ibiki, Anko, Iruka, Kitetsu, Izumo, and Heide. The ones they didn't were a Jounin with a large third-degree burn scar on his face, a chewing Jounin, one with sunglasses. Also in attendance were the clan heads compassed of Hiyashi Hayuga, Shibi Aburam, Sumin Yuzuka, Inoichi Yamanaka, Shikaku Nara, and Chaoza Akimichi. The Jounins of the teams consisted of Kakashi, Kurinai, Asuma, Gai, Baki, the Sound Nin Kofarachimarikich and the Snow Nin Amanda. Amanda was 5'6 tall, she also had green hair tied in a ponytail and green eyes. Amanda wore a white Jounin vest, blue cargo pants, and white boots. Her kunai and shuriken were in pouches on her waist, she wore black iron knuckle gloves, and her forehead protector was used as a belt. If there is anyone who doesn't want to compete due to injury or exhaustion, please raise your hand. Said Saratobi. No one did. This means one of you has to fight twice, so any volunteers? He asked. No one raised their hand. Fine, bring out the screen. The large TV screen came out on the wall and started flashing names. Whoever's name flashes on the screen, either he or she will fight twice. The screen stopped on the name Naruto Uzumaki, which Kiba laughed out loud, saying he won't make it past round one. The screen flashed through the names until it came to. Naruto Uzumaki vs Sakura Hirono. Everybody thought this would be a piece of cake for Sakura, after all, it was no secret that Naruto had a crush on her. Boy were they wrong. They ate started the fight. Sakura did the clone jutsu to distract Naruto, and then she attacked him, he didn't move, so she punched him. This went on for a minute stunning everybody because he wasn't moving an inch as he was defending himself. 
Sakura then gave the chakra enhanced punch to Naruto's very sturdy mask, sending him across the room and crashing into a brick wall. Sakura then taunted Naruto. I guess everyone was right, you're worthless. But now you can't speak, well I guess you aren't the strongest person here like Sasuke-kun. Sakura started with stars in her eyes. Then Naruto started laughing. What's so funny? Sasuke this, Sasuke that, I don't see anything special about him. He said. What? Are you blind? Sasuke-kun is the best. He survived the Ichiha massacre it just went on and on and on, and finally Sasuke will love me after I beat you. Sakura ranted, while well, everyone just sweat dropped. Does he love you? That's a laugh, Sasuke cares for no one other than himself, he wants power not love, he would kill you in a heartbeat if it would get him enough power to beat Itachi, and he's a homo. Naruto shouted, making most of the guys along with someone Chunin and Jounin laugh until they went into a coma. That's when inner Sakura came out. But Sasuke is not gay. He's talented, handsome, he would never hurt me. He's stronger than any of these no-talented rookies, she didn't notice the pissed off looks, said rookies gave her. And one day he'll beat you and take away your dream and become Hokage. Nobody likes you everyone hate you I hate you I hate you I hate you. She screamed. But then stopped realizing her mistake. Naruto snapped that bitch is going to pay. Naruto got up and shouted, shadow clone jutsu. Creating five clones. Naruto then rushed Sakura punching her in the stomach, he then ricochet off the walls, then kicked her the back of the leg. After that one of his clones punched Sakura in the face in the face Yuzu the other four kicked her in the chin, and other body parts ma. Then Naruto jumped on the first clone's back getting higher than Sakura, and he then gave her an axe kick in the back of the head, finishing the move Yuzumaki Barrage. He then jumped, did some hand seals and shouted fire style. Fireball Jutsu. Everyone expected a huge fireball, but instead a small fireball landed on Sakura's hair and burned it all off leaving her bald. Winner. Naruto Yuzumaki. Everybody was shocked that Naruto did that sort of thing, to Sakura no less, but they didn't have time when the next names came up. Choji Akamichi vs. Dosu Kanuda. Thanks for listening. I do hope you enjoy it. If you want the next part of this video. Turn on that bell notification. Like subscribe and comment down below. And also check out the others videos. I have created and enjoyed it. See you guys next video.